Dallas and the Cowboys and the undefeated Panthers coming up next. Here are the 3-0 Carolina Panthers in Arlington to take on the 2-1 Dallas Cowboys AT&T Stadium. Good to have you aboard for a Sunday afternoon. Should be a great game. And here's my partner, three-time Pro Bowl tight end Craig Olson. I'm Kevin Burkhardt. So, Greg, the Cowboys put 41 points on Philadelphia, and Dak Prescott is playing amazingly right now. He is, and it's not often, KB, that a team finds finds themselves with an MVP caliber quarterback, but on any given weekend, they can con control the game through the run, and that's exactly what this uh, Dallas offense find themselves being able to do. It's a big challenge today for this young defense in Carolina and Phil Snow. Phil Snow, their defensive coordinator. Most people wouldn't realize this, let alone Carolina being undefeated. They've got the number one pass D, the number one rush D, the number one D in the NFL, but today may be a different test. Yeah, I think today's the big test, right? They're feeling good about themselves, and they should. You never apologize in the NFL for who you play, but they haven't played anybody to the caliber of this Dallas offense, but I think Phil Snow's going to have a great plan. He's going to have his guys ready to go. They're going to play hard. They're going to play fast, and it's going to be fun to watch. So it'll be the 3-0 Carolina Panthers with their biggest test yet here to take on the Cowboys in Texas. Coming up next on Fox. Fox Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Welcome back to at and I'm Pam Oliver. Well, he may not be glitzy, Sam Darnold Looks like a different guy. He's got this Panthers team off to a 3-0 start. But Carolina won the toss. They've elected to defer, so we won't see Darnold just yet as Tony Pollard, you saw him number 20. There he is, back deep to receive for the Cowboys. And away we go. Week four in the NFL on Fox. And here we go. And Pollard will let it go Said. And so we will see Dak Prescott in this offense first. Leads the NFL in completion percentage, 77.5%. Remember, suffered that gruesome ankle injury last year. Had to have two surgeries on it. Had a shoulder injury in camp. No one remembers that now, Greg, because he looks great. Yeah, some people wondered, would Dak be able to find him his old self? You know, what we saw before the injury last year. And I would say not only has he found it, I'd say you could argue he's even playing better than he was last year. Start off with Elliott in the backfield and a fake blitz coming on toss and there's a sack there full of flip to Elliott and looking for some room to get back to the line of scrimmage he does so instead of a seven yard loss on the sack by Carter Prescott somehow gets rid of it and end up picking up a couple yards you see him here I think he gets his ball out Jermaine Carter comes in unblocked wow yeah, he's not down what a headsy play Great job there. This Phil Snow defense, we talked about a little bit at the open. We're going to kind of dive in as the game goes on. They're very multiple in their blitz schemes. Play one, they got off to a good start. Second down, this is Elliott after that catch and a short gain there. Behind this Cowboys offensive line where... You'll see a couple backs today. You will see Elliott. You'll see a lot of Pollard. Sometimes you'll even see them together on the field. They're going quick here on this first third down of the game. See the ranks overall fifth in the NFL through the first three weeks. Panthers coming with a blitz. It's picked up. Prescott knocked down at the line of scrimmage. And this number one defense gets a hold on third down. Brian Burns is becoming a, he is becoming a superstar off the edge. His speed, 
Watch the pressure he puts here. That's what causes Luvu gets his big hands up and knocks it down. That play starts with the pressure. So you see the pressure on play one, the pressure on play three. That's the formula for this Carolina defense if they want to keep this Dallas offense off rhythm. And they force a three and out to begin with. Alex Erickson back deep for Carolina. We'll call a fair catch right at the 20 and Pam told you about Sam Darnold and how they feel about him here in Carolina after getting out of New York and the numbers show it he looks just he looks like the guy we saw at USC he does and this is what everyone thought he always could be right he looks comfortable he's a good athlete he can get outside the pocket throw on rhythm throw off rhythm it, he's a guy that can really do a lot Joe Brady is a master at building offenses that suit the skill set of his quarterbacks no different right now early in the year what he's done with Sam Darnold and so far it's paying off Start out with Chuba Hubbard in the backfield, the rookie out of Oklahoma State, and he will get it. Running to the right and sneaking through the line and finding his way out for a four-yard game before he runs into Leighton Van Der Esch. And so, nice pickup on first down behind this offensive line, which has had some ups and downs. Darnell has gotten some hits in the last few weeks, but for the most part has remained upright. Now at running back, you saw Hubbard. You'll see a lot. Who you won't see is Christian McCaffrey. The all-world running back who was out got hurt last week against Houston, so that's obviously a tough blow for the Panthers. He's got a hamstring injury. Second down, four-man rush, quick throw in the middle, incomplete. Tried to get it to Robbie Anderson, but Anthony Brown, terrific coverage, and it brings up third down. All week around Carolina, there was a lot about how do we get Robbie Anderson more involved. His targets have kind of been down. You see him try to target him there early. They've got to find a way to get him more involved early in the progression, early in the game, and settle him in. Right now, DJ Moore has really dominated the targets early in the year so far for Carolina. And Toja McCaffrey with the Cowboys missing three key players on defense as well. Third and six for the Panthers. Rodney Smith. Just called up from the practice squad in the backfield. Blitz is coming. Darnold hangs in there. Now down he goes. Cowboys came with the heat, and Randy Gregory got home for the sack. See Gregory lined up right there. He's going to loop it right inside. Matt Paradis tries to slide over. He's just so big. They call that going speed to power. He goes from a speed rusher to just a bull rush. He sets his head right into the center's chest, and Paradis gets run back right into the lap of Darnold. So each team forcing a three and out in the early going, and now CeeDee Lamb, who is the electric returner for the Cowboys, who come with a punt block. Nearly got it. And this ball is high in the air and a fair catch. C.J. Goodwin was the free runner at the punter. I don't know if he got to Charlton, the punter. We'll see, as there is a penalty flag on the field. Jerome Boger is our referee. So it was on Goodwin who lined up in the neutral zone, and we'll move it back. Five yards. So, a couple three and outs. Defenses with the early statement. Scoreless game here in Arlington. <laughs> acquired him this week. They sent the tight end Dan Arnold to Jacksonville. I mean, you look at where he went. He's a ninth overall pick just last year. He's had some health issues, but he comes into a secondary where they're banged up. They lost J.C. Horn out for a while. Uh, he got hurt against Houston with a foot injury. Justin Burris, the starting safety with a groin injury, also hurt in that game. He's out a while. So Henderson, we're told, will play today. And there you see Phil Snow, the defensive coordinator. Greg, you mentioned in the open, you know, it's three games. I get it, but so far, that's pretty good results. First and, first and everything is pretty good, last time I checked. And they forced Dallas to go three and out on the first possession. From the 35, it is Elliott with a big hole. Ezekiel Elliott with the first down and chugging his way out to the 49. A quick 14-yard run for Zeke.
Scott, this is what he does best. You've heard him say, kill, 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 kill. He sees two high safeties. That's a run check for him. They want to run into those fronts when they aren't able to get that extra defender in the box. Dallas going quick here. Prescott, quick hitter. Noah Brown makes the catch. Penalty flag as well as Dante Jackson on the coverage. You know, the quick game is something they've been doing quite a bit, uh, too. Not only the rhythm of the offense, but the quick passes from Dak Prescott. And they really consider it an extension of their run game. To them on first and second down, to get the ball out of Dak's hands, into these playmaking wide receivers, let them run after catch in space. Number 86, 10-yard penalty, we play first down. Dalton Schultz got a little overzealous there with his pick route. You're going to see him. He's going to go. We don't call these picks. We call them rubs. He's trying to gain. I don't like that call. They're trying to run a switch release there to kind of cause those guys to use each other. He ended up kind of just running right down the defender's chest, but I don't think it had much of an impact on the play. Agree. But it moves Dallas back, and instead of that gain, it's first down and 20 now. it up some pressure scrambles away breaks the tackle Prescott out across midfield and Shoney he can still run it just fine so it could have been a disaster but he picked it up got out of trouble and Prescott picks up 15 and KB when we talked to him you asked Dak you said are you being a little more calculated with how you run with the ball and he says absolutely he goes, listen I missed way too much time last year trying to be a hero keeping plays alive you see him here though kept his eyes downfield May check Thompson miss. He said, I'm going to run when I need to, but I need to be smarter because my team needs me on the field. Yeah, slid down quite a bit last week. Got to protect that ankle. Big hole for Elliott and an easy first down. Man, a couple runs for Zeke Elliott. And he's had monstrous holes to run through against his Carolina defense that is averaging allowing 45 yards per game on the ground. That's how good they've been. Well, guess what? They've given up 46 already just a couple minutes into the game. On the fake all day. Prescott can't find it. Anyway, now he's got his man. It's a tight end. Schultz. Nobody home. First down, down to the 20. Heads up play here by Dalton Schultz. He's not really even in the route, KB. He's just blocking, blocking his. Watch, you're going to see him here. He's going to start blocking Brian Burns. He's in. Burns kind of goes inside. He just kind of falls out. Dak finds his check down. There's no one on that side of the field. Cowboys go jumbo here. They bring in Connor McGovern, who plays a little fullback for him, too. To Elliott. A little dance up the middle. And Elliott surging forward. Still going. And what a run by Elliott in this offensive line. Didn't look like there was much there. And he's going to end up picking up about eight yards. This O-line is so physical, right? The double teams, you see Zach Martin and Steele, the right tackle. I mean, they just took the D-tackle onto his back. You see him take 94 hicks in off his... You don't see that a lot in the NFL, but this O-line can get downhill. They love the run game. They want to set the tone. And so far, this game, they've done just that. Tony Pollard checks into the game for the first time in the backfield. They call it a seven-yard run by him. It's a second and three. Here's Pollard's first chance. Nobody home up the middle. First down and a first and goal for Dallas. The holes are huge to run through. Meanwhile, somebody missing on the field for the Cowboys. Let's go down to Pam Oliver. Hey, hey Kevin. While the Cowboys offense is driving, one offensive player not on the field, Amari Cooper. He is on the sideline, no helmet, working on his right hamstring with the massager. We'll get official word from Dallas and get it right to you. All right, Pam, that's not good. Obviously, remember Michael Gallup's been out. He's been hurt since week one. So there's McGovern, the guard in the backfield as a fullback. Big old number 66 on a first and goal. They will get Pollard following McGovern, darting through the middle, down inside the two to the one. You said it, Kevin. They bring in McGovern. He's the, he's a guard, but they use him at fullback. Pollard just gets right in behind him. This offensive line right now is controlling the game up front. Watch the push. 
You see McGovern insert. <laughs> He's not touched for four yards. There's McGovern on that block right there. Second and goal. They switch out to a shotgun. Six runs on this drive. Just one pass. Four tight ends here. Prescott rolling, looking, throwing. Nearly caught by one of those tight ends, Schultz. But it's incomplete. I know my tight end here got very excited in the booth. They had a lot of tight ends on the field there, KB. And then they kind of broke formation. And they ended up in more like a conventional one-back, three-receiver set. They tried to get Schultz on the sprint out to the flat. Well defended. How many tight ends can they play on one play, Greg? There's never too many. Six, seven, eight. There's never too many. Put them all in. They go jumbo again on a third and goal. They will run it to Elliott. He's in for the touchdown. He lost the ball, but I think he crossed the goal line first. It's a score for Dallas. talked in the open kev right they got a all-world quarterback but if you come in and say we're going to take the pass away and we're going to stop Dak yeah he's clearly in before the ball comes out all you got to do is cross over the top of the goal line and, and the plays over it's a touchdown so you see that was an easy one they can play to finish my point they can play so physical in the run game it just puts such pressure do we stack the box and let Dak throw it do we play soft coverages and let him run the ball right at us we've seen a little bit of that so far early in this first quarter and the extra point by Zerline who missed one left last week that one is up and true so remember they were back first and 20 after the penalty the Prescott 15 yard scramble could have been a busted play and it was all run capped off by Zeke boom seven nothing or at least most of it 52 of those 70 yards were on the ground and consider this Cowboys in this first quarter have 66 yards rushing Carolina's rush D had been allowing 45 per game the first three weeks so that was kind of like we see your number one ranking and you could you know do what you want with it here you go now we'll see how the Panthers answer as Alex Erickson back deep and he's gonna let this one go and they'll start on their own 25 and we remind you there's still time to enter Fox Super 6 giving you a chance at $100,000 of Terry Bradshaw's money free to play enter now and pick six outcomes from today's game for your chance at $100,000 scan the QR code download the app and play for free so now we see Sam Darnold break believe it or not it's the first time he's trailed all year as the Panthers quarterback Again, no Christian McCaffrey out for a couple weeks with a hamstring. Here's Chuba Hubbard right up the middle in a big hole and a first down. Hubbard's got 15 as he's up across the 39-yard line. The rookie out of Oklahoma State who led the nation in rushing two years ago. I mean, he was a beast. Now getting a chance with McCaffrey's sideline. This is really well blocked. Nice job there by tight end 80. Ian Thomas holding off the end. Urban. You said it, Chuba Hubbard. This is a guy now that's been really, really productive. Granted, it was at the college level, but if they can just get a little of that production to make up for the loss of McCaffrey, it'll make a big difference for this offense getting by without him. On a fake. Donald's got a lot of time. He's going to unleash it. Going deep down the field for more, and he missed him. Diggs was on the coverage, but he was beat, but Darnold could not connect. Let's look at this Dallas defense, Greg, under Dan Quinn, first year defensive coordinator, no stranger to the league, former Falcons head coach, and certainly Seattle defensive coordinator, won a Super Bowl with them. There's one thing they're doing better than anybody else, getting turnovers. It is, and it's, it all starts with emphasis. It starts every day in practice. He mentioned it every day in team meeting, defensive meeting. They're all pushing and pulling in the same direction. He's coming in trying to change the culture of this defense. They've come under a lot of heat the last few years. Dan Quinn's been doing it at a high level for a long time. Bringing Ricci the fullback for the first time. On a second down, they'll pitch it to Hubbard, who gets a block. First down, and Chuba Hubbard into Dallas territory. He picks up 12 more yards. I love that they're I love that they're still staying committed to the run. Watch the, the fullback here. He's gonna lead. Chuba Hubbard's gonna get right behind him. 
again, really well blocked. We saw it on the other side with Dallas and their run game. It's nothing complicated. It's zone run. Get hats on hats and let running backs find and run to daylight. Hubbard checks out. Royce Freeman in the game now. They're going to use all three backs today without McCaffrey and the fake pressure. Donald in trouble. Slings out to Moore. One-handed catch. Gets by. Great effort all around. Darnold was in trouble, got it to Moore, and they turned that into a pretty nice play. Play before they go zone. We talked about it going to the right. Now, this is what being effective in the run does. Watch DJ Moore. He's going to come across the entire formation. Hard action right. DJ comes across out the back door. They call that a hide route. You come behind the line of scrimmage, behind the offensive linemen. It's very hard for defenses to find those guys, especially when they come from out wide as a wide receiver. Moore's been terrific so far this year. Second and short, and they're going to sneak it. Just wanted to get the first down, and they will do it. We've got our first game break of the day. Let's check in with Carissa Thompson. Thanks, Kevin. Chiefs looking to snap that two-game losing streak. They're down 3 nothing in Philly when Mahomes pitches this one to Clyde Edwards-Hilaire for the one-yard score. Chiefs leading 7-3. Kevin? Carissa, so good to have you back. And healthy, by the way, so welcome back. There you go. Chiefs uh, lost two in a row. That's a rarity the last couple of years. So has Philadelphia. First down Carolina here. 7-0 Cowboys in the first quarter. Oh. Now Freeman in motion. Darnold back to throw. Zings it over the middle to Moore who gets belted. Still on his feet and he's up. Moore staying alive inside the 15 and spinning out of bounds inside the 10. My goodness, DJ Moore, how did he do it? Robbie Anderson been a little slow. Why hasn't he gotten a lot of targets? Because he's got DJ Moore. They've developed an unbelievable chemistry, but listen, this has nothing to do with the play. This is just a guy making an unbelievable effort. DJ Moore is as good, if not the best, run after catch wide receiver. Taking contact. Look at him stay up. He doesn't go down. Watch it. I mean, what balance. Taking the hit from Parsons. I mean, that was unbelievable. It's been like that since day one when he joined us years back when I was still there. He's a really, really dynamic guy with the ball in his hand. 29 yard gain, first and goal now for the Panthers. As Darnold on the give to Hubbard. At that time, he's bottled up. No gain for Hubbard, who ran into a Cowboys brick wall that time. Justin Hamilton, Randy Gregory were there. Well, you bring up an interesting point, right? Everyone's like, well, where's Robbie Anderson? Because they gave him the big contract, and he's a very good player. But DJ Moore has been awesome. Like, it's hard to argue with that result, correct? It is, and I get a little I get a little skittish anytime I hear them say, you know, we got to get this guy involved. we got to get the ball here. When your quarterback's playing well and your offense is playing well, you don't want to force anything on your quarterback. You want to allow him to play with a player's mind, go through his progressions, and not feel like he needs to force the ball. The targets will come to Robbie. He's too good of a player. But right now, DJ Moore... He's hot. Second and goal. Donald pressure up the middle. Gets out. Throws it to Moore again. And he's near the end zone. And then waiting for a signal. Looks like he stepped out a little short. Let's see. Call was out of bounds. And that's a correct call. So now third and goal for the Panthers. Look where they have DJ Moore lined up. That's a route that usually Christian McCaffrey would play, and people say, how do you replace McCaffrey? Well, when you got versatile guys like DJ Moore, they can go in the backfield. We saw him play out wide. He can do a lot of things for you. Here it's Moore against Diggs, matched up at the bottom of your screen on a third and goal. Darnold going to run it. Option, he's in. Sam Darnold for the touchdown. His league-leading fourth rushing touchdown of the year. Who would have ever... Who would have ever thought that Sam Darnold would be the red zone running threat of this Panthers offense? Like you said, he's got four rushing touchdowns. They've come on QB draws. That was a speed option. Sam Darnold is running speed option. Watch. He's running. He sees the lane. The defensive end takes the running back. Untouched. Really creative use of his athleticism in the red zone for a guy that's not really thought of highly as a runner. He's very effective. So quickly at the beginning of the year, who uh, took the bet week four? Sam Darnold would lead the league in rushing That'd touchdowns. be a heck of a prop bet. That would be something else on Fox Bet. You'd be killing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Extra point, attempt to tie it. 
It's up and good from Gonzalez. So after the Cowboys go down the field, the Panthers have an answer. DJ Moore, the big play, absorbing the hit from Parsons, staying up on his feet, going for 29, and then Darnold racing it in on the option. 7-7, we're tied. The Cowboys roll down the field on their second drive. Elliott with the touchdown. Carolina does the same. Big play, 29-yard hookup to DJ Moore, set up first to goal, and then Darnold runs it in for the touchdown. And we are all square. Good start to this one in Arlington. And now we'll see the Cowboys offense take the field for their third time. And you touched on this at the very beginning. You know, what makes them so good is their ability to do anything they want. So on that last drive, it was, we're going to run it down your throat. So what's Carolina do defensively now? Yeah, I just can't stress enough how uncommon that is, right? To be able to have that high-level productive passing game, but then be able to just flip your cap around based on what the defense tries to take away. And we can just run it right at you, play after play. There's not a lot of teams across the NFL that have that versatility. Dallas is at the top of the list. Well, this is interesting. Cooper's back on the field for Dallas, shallowed by Henderson. And that's incomplete. They go the other way. That time, it's Dante Jackson knocking it away from CeeDee Lamb. But So Amari Cooper, Pam told us, had the hamstring. He checks back in right there. And then Greg first snaps for C.J. Henderson, and he was running, shadowing him. I was able to pull Matt Rule aside, and I said, hey, tell me a little bit about Henderson. He said, listen, the kid can play. We've wanted him well before J.C. Horn got hurt. We viewed him last year as a surefire top 10 pick. That's him 15, right? There you go. On second down, pressure coming. Press guy gets rid of it, has a completion, and has a first down. And the ball comes loose at the end. Carolina's got it, but was he down? Let's see. And the signal is Carolina football. Brian Burns is a guy who forced the fumble. And let's see if he indeed was down. Schultz. And sure looks like it. Looks like he's down, right? Yeah, let's see. Let's see. When his knee hits the ground, you'll see Sean Chandler gets his hand in. It looks like his right knee is down before Chandler punches it out. The crowd is reacting as such as they see it on this gigantic scoreboard. That's a... Now, remember, the ruling on the field was turnover. This is a great shot. Let's see. He still got it after that hit. He's down. I don't think there's any doubt if you're looking at that replay and again right there. Yes. Now they've been, Greg should point out, they've been very strict staying with the calls in the field unless it's obvious, but do you think that's obvious? It is. It all depends on whether or not they feel like that ball's moving. I don't think it is. I think his knee is clearly down before the ball starts moving, but as you said, they've tried to stick with the call on the field. They've tried to stick with the call on the field as, as long as possible. We're going to take a look at it now. All right, so they'll put this in review. We'll take a break while they do. We'll see what happens here. Potential turnover. After reviewing the play, the runner's knee was down at the 37-yard line with the foul still in control. It'll be Dallas' ball first and 10 at the 37. Please yeah. reset the game clock to 2 minutes, 37 seconds. Yeah, we checked with our rules expert, Dean Blandino, in L.A., and he agreed that the runner, Schultz, was down. So that's the right call. Dallas gets a first down on a 12-yard completion to Schultz. As you look at Prescott's numbers so far, one of those was a flip while falling to the ground, almost being sacked. <laughs> so it's been an interesting start. Cooper remains on the field for Dallas. So it appears, at least right now, that hamstring is okay. Cowboys moved. Panthers showed blitz. It got him a little bit. Offense, number 88. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. It's on C.D. Lambs. That'll move it back. He sees Sean Chandler trying to time his blitz. Should just be watching the ball. So his reaction. Oh. I've been there. <laughs> been there. Draw. 
after a couple of yards. Brian Burns all over him. Another game break. Let's check back in or check back in with Carissa Thompson. Thank you so much, Kevin. I wasn't the only one who had a bad week last week. Justin Fields did. Looking to rebound here. Hands it off to David Montgomery, who scores from nine yards out. His second of the day. Bears had just one offensive touchdown over the last two games, Kevin. Now they have two today up 14 up. Well, that's a positive for them. Here's Schultz somehow snagged it and then gets drilled by Chin. And that time the ball's out again, and Carolina may have it this time. Jeremy Chin with the stick, and let's see who came up with it. That was a huge hit there by Chin. I thought Jack Thompson was going to pick this. Look at him try to undercut this route. But now watch the hit, Jeremy Chin. He lifts him off the ground. Now again, was he down again? Tell from that angle. He's at the one of four o'clock. There's that big stop. Oh, down. wow. So he the ball. Third down. So they're saying, regardless of whether it came out before he hit the ground or not, since his forward progress had stopped, they're calling it dead, not reviewable. That play is going to stand regardless of what you think about it. Well, yeah, you cannot review forward progress unless you're talking about the first down or the goal line. So in that particular play, it has no relevance. But I, I, I guess if you look at it, too, I, I think he was down for the ball came out again. So if you're looking at it from the Carolina point of view, now Matt Rule wants to say I want to challenge it, but you can't challenge a forward progress unless it's first down or the goal line. Let's watch the whole thing again. I mean, that's a textbook tackle. How is that forward progress? Oh, the ball is loose right there. Ball is definitely loose on contact. Dallas is going to dodge a bullet here. Boy, there's a man yeah, that ball's out the second he hits him. That's a that's a clear fumble. That ball's out on contact. Look at that angle. That's a great angle by our crew. Let's bring in Dean Blandino here. Dean, that, I'm, I'm curious about the forward progress call there. Take us through the mechanics, what you're seeing. Yeah, what the officials are looking at, they have the, the receiver with control being driven back. That would be progress. As you can see from our replays, the instant that Schultz is hit, the ball comes loose. It's not forward progress. But unfortunately for Carolina, this is not reviewable, and that's what they're telling Coach Rule now. You can't challenge this. Yeah, that is a big break. So, I mean, crazy, right? Schultz nearly fumbles on one play. They rule correctly correctly that his knee was down, and there right. they get a big break. It's a bad call, as Dean told you, not forward progress. That should have been Carolina ball. Dallas, see if they could convert on a third and two as Pollard in the game at tailback. See Henderson right there in the, in the slot. Give it to Pollard instead. flew through the hole and got some help. Wow! And a fourth and two. Shaq Thompson is playing at an elite level of linebacker. Watch him run through. He sees the line pull, and he just hits the trigger, fills the gap. Got it. That lineman's got to pull a little tighter off the double team. You see Steele go too wide, but... Wow. That's filling a hole. It's a great play by Shaq. Physical game. Watch him. Watch how wide they pull. And watch how tight Shaq scrapes off the down block of Tyron Smith. See that? Steele's supposed to pull a little bit tighter to the backside of left tackle Tyron Smith. See him try to react late. You're never going to react to Max Shaq there. That is so Big time play. play. Right. Meanwhile, while we showed you the replays, Hassan Reddick was slow to get off. He did walk off under his own power. He was out before a little bit, too, so not sure what's bothering him. He did walk off there. Fourth down, and it looks like the Cowboys will go. They've got their offense on the field here. Do you like it? I'm not sure. I think on your side of the ball here, it's a that's a long one, right? That's probably closer to two. You almost wonder, they're going to try to get him to jump. We'll find out. Fourth down, going for it. Prescott has time. Burns coming at him, gets away. Prescott looking around. He's got it more. Still going, Prescott, and he cruises inside the 35. So just when he told us he didn't want to really want to run anymore, he's had two huge runs today. And the initial play broke down. There was nowhere really to go with the ball. Carolina defends it. They tried to run kind of a double mesh there. Man coverage, there's nowhere, nowhere to go with the ball, but... Step two of the play is where guys like Dak Prescott just kill you. You have a great coverage. You have everything matched up. 
and he's just a great athlete and he keeps the drive alive. Prescott has 36 yards rushing. He's got 40 passing. Gives you an idea how this game has started. Final 27 seconds of the quarter. Elliott is upended after a short gain. Melvin, the cornerback, came up. And that should take us through the first quarter. It's been fun. We got the undefeated Panthers. Cowboys coming up a rousing win on Monday night. We've got a 7 7 game. Cowboys going to maybe try to get one more play. Up here. So I think here they're going to try to get him to jump right, right before the quarter ends. And won't get that chance. So, you know, just when Dak Prescott said, yeah, I don't know how much I want to run anymore, his legs have got them going here today, 7-7 after one. We start the second quarter from Arlington, Texas. Good one so far. The undefeated Panthers and the Cowboys. 7-7 game. Dak Prescott using his legs a lot in this one. A couple big runs to keep drives going. That last one came on fourth down. So we start with the second and nine on the fake. He's got a lot of time. He's firing it deep near side. It's caught by Cooper, who's got a first down inside the 20, playing through that hamstring that he tweaked. And Cooper's got 14. That connection's as good as it gets in the NFL. You're gonna see him, he kind of does a little stutter, then he drives like he's gonna try to run by him. Watch. Comes off, little chatter. Now it looks like a go route. Now he just, they say you pull the string back, and he comes back to the throw. Dax on time. That ball is out of his hand before Amari Cooper turns his head. It's a really high level connection. That's a good ball. Only the second receiver to catch a pass for Dallas. Carolina's only had one receiver catching it so far, too. DJ Moore. Prescott over the middle, wide open, Jarwin walking in for the touchdown. Watch the switch release here. You're going to see Jarwin go outside. That causes the rub. Chin has to play over the top. It's just a little wide choice, but it's the most important aspect of that play is the switch release. Chin has to avoid contact. By the time he comes back underneath Jarwin, he can really run. That's a tough matchup. It's a really, really good scheme design there by Kellen Moore. And we get a whistle here on the field. A couple penalties in the end zone. You know, you think about Jarwin, you know, Dalton Schultz has been playing well. Had a big Monday night game against Philadelphia with two touchdowns. Jarwin. 12, 12 men on the defense. Okay. Jarwin's the guy they gave a big contract to before last year, and then unfortunately he blew out his ACL the first game, and then Schultz was allowed to grow with the offense, so he's kind of been the secondary guy. So for him, you know that's got to feel good. And now after the penalty. 12 men on the field, defense. Now smart, right? I love this. This is really smart. To the goal from the two to the one, and we would do the track. Right, you go to really the one-yard line. You can get two points by just getting one yard. That's really, really, I like this by Mike McCarthy. But you're right. Jarwin is who they thought was their heir apparent to Jason Witten. Jason Witten retired. He came back. Then he moved on to, to the Raiders. And like you said, early in the year last year, he tears his ACL. Dalton Schultz has kind of a coming out party. They feel like now they have two tight ends that they can do a lot with. Wilson in motion. Prescott throw it quickly. Caught. Is he in? He is for the two. Schultz just got enough to get in for the two-point conversion. Yeah, I don't think originally he was in. Jeremy Chin does a nice job, but watch the second reaction. Does he extend the ball? He extends the ball, but did his knee touch first? So he's clearly not in. I think he is in. The tip of the ball, the front tip of the ball, just has to break the line. I think he's in. Dallas up by eight. This is with Dalton Schultz on the two point right there. He's not. And then if we get forward one small frame, I mean, it's so ridiculously close. Quite honestly, I don't know if he's there. I don't either. But uh, it is it is good. It counts as the two. And, you know, we looked at this a million times frame by frame. Dean Blandino. Dean, 
I mean, this is crazy close. I'm guessing so close that they would not ever overturn it with this margin of error. What do you think? Yeah, you're, you're looking for something clear and obvious. It's literally literally one frame. It's is the is the calf down, and then the knee. It's so close. I think he's short. But is that obvious enough to overturn? And, and I think that's where ultimately you want to stay with the call. Yeah, that's been kind of the trend this year, right, Dean? I mean, if, if there's any doubt at all, just leave the call alone, essentially. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. All right, Dean, appreciate that. There you go. So think about this for Dell. Think about this drive, Greg. They had a turnover. Remember the uh, the call that didn't go Carolina's way? It should have been their ball. They got that going their favor. Fourth and two, huge play. Dak runs for 21. So an eventful drive, and After they cash reviewing in. The play. The runner's knee was down short of the goal line. Therefore, the try is no good. We also have a five-yard penalty for the 12 on the defense that will be enforced on the kickoff. Wow, very interesting. So they did say that he was short. Now, they said the 12th penalty enforced on the kickoff. They enforced it on the try. Right, because that's why they got the attempt from the one-yard line. So I so, think he's wrong because there's... Yeah, I... I I, I, I think, think he so just too. mixed up the announcement. But that's interesting, right? We all kind of said, wow, too close, but they overturned it, and they may have gotten it correct. There's a lot going on here. A lot going on. There's a lot this going on. This is fun. All right, so it's a six-point lead for Dallas after all that. Sam Darnold has the Panthers off to a good start on the season, and it just feels like a new guy. I mean, the number three overall pick by the Jets. I mean, just look at last year where he was. Jets had a miserable season, and he had the lowest passer rating in the league compared to this year. How about the snaps trailing? Now, today, he actually took some snaps trailing, and he will again, but he didn't trail for a single snap. That certainly helps when you're not down by 30 every time. I mean, all these things coming together, and, you know, you talked to him the other day in our great feature on the pregame show. Get to that in a second. On first down, as Chuba Hubbard starts in the backfield. And we get a penalty flag. False star. Offense, number 86. Five-yard pillar. Still first down. So what was your impression sitting down with Sam and that feature that ran? He just felt like he was at peace. I got the I got the notion that he was just really comfortable in this system. He was really comfortable playing for this organization. I think he views it as really a fresh start. And I get that, right? At any point in a guy's career, things don't go your way, get off to a tough start. Sometimes change of scenery is all you need. And so far, that's been the case for Sam Donald. Yeah, he's fit quite well. First and 15 after the penalty. As Darnold, pressure coming in trouble, and then gets off to Hubbard, who gets clobbered. Man, there's some hitting in this game. Anthony Brown on the tackle there. He feels the pressure just enough. He does a great job sliding up in the pocket. He kind of does an Aaron Rodgers where both his feet are off the ground. Nice job, but what a tackle. We've seen the secondary of both teams be really physical. Yeah, that's so been Jeremy changing. Chin on the last drive forced the almost fumble. These guys are playing hard. Second down, four-man rush. Gregory coming on the rush, throwing deep for Robbie Anderson. Makes the catch, but he was out of bounds. He was run out of bounds that time, and there's a penalty flag back near the quarterback, so hang on. Darnold might have taken a shot from Gregory. Personal foul, face mask, offense, number 75. Half the distance to the goal, replay second down. And said it's on Irving, the left tackle. Yeah, you'll see Irving here. He gets his hands on the back of his helmet, and he just rips Gregory's helmet off. That's pretty clear and obvious for the officials. Hard to not call it when the helmet gets ripped off. Yeah. You know, Joe Brady, the offensive coordinator for Carolina, in keeping with Darnold, I thought he had an interesting thing to say there. He said, I didn't talk to anybody when we got him because I wanted to form my own opinions.
So the Cowboys have declined the penalty there. Instead of second and long, it's going to be a third and 12. Something to watch, Kev. Mike Parsons has not lined up like he has the last couple weeks. He's playing a traditional off-the-ball linebacker in coverage here. Darnold goes over the middle. Anderson in traffic. Has it for a first down. So they decline the penalty, and it comes back to Burnham there as Carolina picks up the first. Yeah, I'm not sure about that decision, right? You give them third and 12 while not, you know, routine in any sense. And then they went just a real soft three-man rush. They drop eight. Robbie Anderson does a great job just finding the void. I think I accept that personal foul face mask call. Push them back, make it second and a mile, and say I got two downs to get off the field. But credit to Carolina. Did a great job converting third and long. Keep it alive. Now they go back to the ground. Hubbard near side. In trouble and Barry. J. Ron Curse. All over him. And Hubbard goes backwards. I really like J. Ron Curse. Watching him, you're going to see him. He's going to insert down to be the extra defender in the box. He's got contain, right? So he's the D gap element of this defense. He's jumped off. He kind of went un kind of unnoticed last year for the Jets. Came over here this year in his first year in this Dan Quinn defense. He's 6'4, he's long, he's physical. I really like him. Yeah, he was a former special teams captain with the Vikings. Last year, first time he really got on the field as a defensive player a lot, and now he's thriving under Dan Quinn. Fake to Smith. Darnold stepping up, going deep and incomplete. Double coverage there as he tried to get it to Tommy Tremble, the rookie tight end. And you see Curse again going stride for stride with the tight end. They feel really good about Tommy Tremble. Last week, you mentioned it at the top of the show. They added C.J. Henderson from Jacksonville. In that trade, Jacksonville said, we're not doing this trade unless you give us Dan Arnold. The reason they were willing to give up Dan Arnold, they're really high on Tommy Tremble, the rookie uh, tight end. He's got some skills that they think they can use as he continues to get more opportunities. Third and 11. D.J. Moore lined up against Trayvon Diggs at the top of your screen. That's a fun matchup. Right there. Darnold, pressure, steps away, looking to run, has room. Darnold sprinting, has a first down to midfield. So both quarterbacks using their legs. Darnold has a TD on the ground, and that time he's got 14 yards and a first. So anytime you play man coverage, right, no one's eyes are on. But watch Cam Irving. We said he had the penalty earlier. Watch him redirect this stunt. He distorts the defense. He distorts the rush. That's the rush lane that Sam Darnold sees. Man coverage. Everyone has their back to the quarterback. He sees space and he goes. And Curse slow to come off the field here. Now you see good news. He's walking under his own power. Didn't see what happened to him on the play. So interesting. The quarterbacks in this game, Greg, you know, their legs have been almost effective as their arms so far. And a first down. Drive continues for the Panthers. Hubbard, left side, has some room, trying to leap into the air, and does so inside the 45. And Hubbard's got seven. Now the game break. Let's go back to Carissa Thompson. Thanks, Kevin. Giants, Saints, scoreless in the second, missing Sterling Shepard and Darius Slayton today. But they do have John Ross, who hauls it in. 52-yard touchdown from Daniel Jones. Giants up in this one, 7-0. Kevin, Greg, and Frank. His Giants debut, the former Bengal, Carissa. I mean, New Orleans, just happy to be home with Ida. They haven't even been in New Orleans in a month. So their first home game and trailing early. Second and three here. 13-7. Dallas leads it. Ten and a half to play. First down. They're going to run it to the near side. And Freeman has it for a first down. So staying on the ground is Carolina. So you're talking about Parsons. We've seen him a lot as an edge rusher last couple weeks. You know, Dan Quinn said, you know, this week maybe more of a traditional linebacker will rush him in, in key spots. He's been, as you noted, I haven't really seen him rushing at all. Maybe a snap or two. But there is a connection here with these two teams. We'll get to it after this. 
Anderson in motion on the fake. Darnold rolls out, swings it back to Anderson, breaks the tackle. Anderson still going inside the 35. And that could have been a big loss, but he got away from Malik Hooker. And he picked up five. So anyway, going back to the story, Parsons coming to Penn State. Joe Brady was an assistant at Penn State at the time. So Parsons comes in and says, you know, I'd like to play wide receiver at this camp. And Penn State says, all right, I guess, sure, you're kind of a defense player. Joe Brady said he was far beyond the best wide receiver in the entire camp. He said we just couldn't believe that this kid was a linebacker, pass rusher, kind of hybrid defensive player. And then one day he just decided, you know what, I'm going to go be the best wide receiver at the Penn State camp. He said he's a phenomenal athlete. Some pretty interesting backstory there. It really is. Second down and four. Playing linebacker, and the Cowboys happy about it. Darnold, four-man rush, blocked up more. Comes back to get it for another first down. Man, is he good. Good hands by Moore working against Diggs to move the chains. Yeah, Diggs has kind of splashed early in the year. He's got a lot of picks, six through his first 15 games. But I don't think Carolina is going to shy away. They feel if Diggs is going to mirror DJ Moore, they feel like they can still win that matchup against what's become one of the premier defensive backs in the league in Diggs. Moore's got great balance. He's strong. We talked earlier about his run after catch. There's nothing really in his game that he doesn't do well. The 11th play of this drive for Carolina. You ready? Wait, what? Donald on the fake. Late pressure coming. Stays alive and gets rid of it. What a play to Smith. Penalty flag down. First down inside the 15. How did he stay up? Golston was all over him. So let's see what the penalty is now. Holding defense number seven. This penalty is declined. The result of the play. First down. Watching these quarterbacks is a blast. I mean, neither guy is really known as the scrambler and the great athlete, but I mean, that's a sack. And next thing you know, it's a huge chunk play out of the backfield. We've seen Sam Darnold impact the game with both his legs, his arm on the move, in the packet, just like we have Dak do for the first four games of the year. Both these guys are playing. Really, really good football. And Darnold had the big run on third down, just like Dak did on the last drive to kind of drive home your point. Whatever you can do, I can do better kind of thing. Oh, there you go. First down, Darnold to throw it. Pressure coming, they set up the screen. They've got some room. Not anymore. Jalen Smith says, no way that's working. Nice play by the Cowboys middle linebacker. They try to get the tight end screen there to Ian Thomas. They were just a little off. So much of the timing here is when you see that when Moten releases and Miller releases, Ian Thomas has to be a little more inside those numbers. They call it a train track, and we're going to run up the inside. You see, they're trying to kick them out. The path there is inside edge of the numbers because that's where your offensive linemen are trying to clear the way. Train got derailed, apparently, on that one. Yeah, got off the tracks a little bit. <laughs> Second and nine. Darnold, quarterback run, it's open inside the five, Darnold is in again! This is unbelievable, this is unbelievable. Sam Darnold, a rushing machine, two on the ground today, five on the year, and we're tied. Look, so when they motion the back out of the backfield, watch the reaction here. Micah Parsons, in essence, leaves. He thinks that Micah Parsons chases the backs. We got four to the side. Sam Darnold, that's a design. If they don't have enough guys, he's going to throw the swing route. And if they, if they you know, leave everyone out of the box and he has numbers, it's a designed quarterback draw. That was a monster drive, 13 plays. Darnold picked up the first down earlier with his legs on the big run, and there runs in his second touchdown of the game, his league-leading fifth of the year. He's 75 yards, he had a huge pickup of first down with his legs, and then he runs in his second touchdown of the day on a beauty of a play design, which Greg will show you right after the kick. And the Panthers lead the Cowboys 14-13 midway through this second quarter. Greg, so show us why that play works. So this is really a quarterback draw with a pass option. Once Royce Freeman leaves the box, you're going to see him motion out. Darnold's going to look. 
Now, all he's going to do is he's going to count. He's got five blockers, and he's got five men. Really, it's four and a half. Micah Parsons gives a lot of attention. That's the trigger for Sam Darnold to turn it from a swing screen to a quarterback draw. It's all just a math equation. We have more numbers than you. We're going to go in that direction. Really simple play design, really well executed. Now it's Prescott's turn to answer. Blitz, he sees it by Thompson. Incomplete, Lamb and Jackson. There's a penalty flag. Pass interference, defense, number 26. Spot on the foul, automatic, first down. The official just thinks Dante Jackson gets to C.D. Lamb just a half count early. See him kind of wrap his right arm around his waist right in front of the official. Here's Elliot. Right side, not much. Got an injury update. Let's go downstairs to Pam. Hey there, Kevin. Panthers linebacker Hassan Reddick. He remains on the sideline from his team. He spent an eternity in the medical tent. I checked with the team. They said there is nothing official to report, although I uh, did observe the medical staff working on Reddick's right shoulder, testing the strength in that arm. Interesting. Yeah, he's been in and out of the game. Right now, two linebackers on the field for Carolina. So his position not out there. Prescott being pressured, sets up a screen, blocking for Schultz, who gets slowed up brilliantly. That could have been a big play, but Shaq Thompson was there to blow it up, and now he's slow to get up. And they cannot afford to lose him. Jack Thompson in his seventh year. Greg was a teammate of yours. He's their best defensive player. Let's see what happened. Number seven. They have this screen set up really well. We talked about the landmark on the Panthers, but Shaq just blows it up. I don't know exactly what happened. I'm not exactly sure. Tell exactly what happened, KB. You just got to hope that Shaq Thompson can get up and it's nothing too serious. Well, this is what makes Shaq Thompson so good, right? Give you a little idea as he gets up here. Last week against Houston, this, these three plays all came in a four-play sequence. The way they use him, here he's doing a pick stunt. He's getting the center off the twisting Frankie Luvu to get the quarterback off his spot. Hassan Reddick comes and cleans it up. Then two plays later, they got five guys down. Now they add Shaq Thompson to the rush. Really, his explosiveness and his quickness. All those plays came in the fourth quarter last week on Thursday to close that game out. He's such a versatile, dynamic player, you got to hope he's okay. So he goes out, but Hassan Reddick comes back in on the third down. Set up his flat the other way. Wilson gets a great block and a first down. That was some block by Noah Brown to allow that play to work. And it's a first down for Dallas. And the timing of the block, KB, if he does that block a second earlier, it's pass interference. But you can see he times this almost perfectly this is a little early, but in live action, it seemed like the block and the catch happened simultaneously. The official obviously let it go. Not a first down. They will run it to Elliott, who motors on up to midfield. Picks up six yards on that play. And that'll put Dallas up at the 100-yard mark rushing on the day. Elliott's got a touchdown today, 48 yards on the ground. Had a big game last week against Philly, 95 yards, two touchdowns. Five minutes to go in this first half. C.J. Henderson back out there this time against Lamb. They're going to run it anyway, and good tackle. Big old Derek Brown, with number one draft pick last year on the stop. Something interesting about C.J. Anderson, the Panthers feel like if they can keep him on their boundary, meaning lining up on defense on their sideline, it allows their coaches to coach him, give him some of the techniques, give him some of the calls. He's only been here a few days. Third down. Pressure on Prescott. Throws. Noah 
one home. Tried to get it to Jarwin. Jackson was the closest defender. And now fourth and three. And it looks like they're going to go for it again. So you're telling me they're literally yelling directions out to Henderson? They are, and they just feel like because he hasn't been here very long, he understands basic, right, coverages. We're in cover three. We're in cover two. Man, move inside, move back. They can give him basic calls. He might not know the exact verbiage. He might not know the exact coverage. But he's a good enough player, and he's a talented enough player that they think they can kind of coach him through live action. So Dallas decides not to go this time on fourth and three. They will punt it away. Erickson, fair catch call, does so inside the 10. So, 419 to go in this first half. Sam Darnold, couple rushing touchdowns. Got a one-point game. Show where we'll take you frame by frame through all the early action around the NFL, including the Browns getting candid in Minnesota and the Eagles hoping to bounce back against the Chiefs. It's all coming up in a flash on the Verizon Halftime. Like that, Kurt. Look forward to seeing you guys at the half in 419. Both quarterbacks today, what are they doing? See, the numbers, rushing yards have been a big factor because each quarterback on their scoring drives has had big runs. Certainly, Darnold with two touchdown runs. That's been a big portion of it. And the owners looking on, David Tepper on the left for the Panthers. Jerry Jones for the Cowboys on the right. Good game so far. Carolina by one and getting absolutely swarmed is Chuba Hubbard. There's a penalty that comes in from the secondary, too, as Odigi Zua was there on the tackle. Now let's see what the penalty is. Carolina might be moving back a couple yards here. Holding offense number 67. This penalty is declined. Second down. Okay. So that's on John Miller, the right guard. Just bring up a second down and 12. today about getting Robbie Anderson the ball does have two catches today DJ Moore's been their leading receiver with four catches Darnold here comes a stunt Gregory gets rid of it though and there is Moore underneath who is up to the 15 yard line gonna be about third down and four coming up but really nice job there Sam Darnold they, they drop into a real soft zone he goes through his progression quick realizes nothing's really open downfield get the ball off to DJ Moore put yourself in third and four third and five not every play has to be a highlight, right? That's the art of playing quarterback that gets lost in the highlights that we all want to see our guys make. Sometimes those plays like there, if they lead to a third down conversion, are hidden wins within the game. Carolina three of four on third down so far this afternoon. Looking at Robbie Anderson, throws behind him. Anderson, though, was his speed, able to recover and get the first down. Really good play design there. He brings Robbie Anderson from the right side of the formation. You see him, he comes all the way across. What this tells Sam Darnold is it's zone coverage. The way they try to pass this off because nobody runs with him, Curse can't, they call it banjo, he can't bump out to that wider receiver in time. Really good play design there, setting the formation with the motions. Here's Hubbard. And dances his way across the 24 short game. Another game break. Let's go back to Carissa Thompson. Thanks, Kevin. Saints trailing 7 0 on the winless Giants here. Jameis Winston connects with Juwan Johnson for a 15 yard score. We are all tied at 7. All righty. Interesting game there. Winston's been up and down so far in the replacement year for Drew Brees. And Sam Darnold has been all up. Really, no downs in his new tenure with the Panthers. And going to take us down to the two-minute warning here. And Panthers with the football with a one-point lead. And Darnold trying to get his team to 4-0 on this young season. 14-13. Quarterback with five rushing touchdowns, first four games ever. If I were to take a guess, I would have either said Lamar Jackson or the guy that you play with for so many years, Cam Newton. Yeah, these Panther fans, they've seen some quarterback rushes <laughs> over the years, right? but 
Sam Donald, I'll tell you, you can't, you can't be anything but impressed with how he's played so far. Two minutes to go in the half. Sorry, Greg. Two minutes to go in the half. He's seen with three timeouts. Second down and eight for Carolina. Three man rush. Make it four. Here comes Gregory. He's got another. Second sack today for Dallas. Second sack for Randy Gregory. Some of the other pressures we talked about scheme and whatnot. This is Randy Gregory just straight up winning a one on one matchup. Just relentless. He starts up the field. Cameron Irving kind of sets too deep. He comes underneath. They teach the defensive ends, Kevin, when they get to the quarterback's depth, it's time to stop. We got to come back underneath the, the blocker to get in the face of the quarterback. It's exactly what you see Randy Gregory does. They call it a retrace. Cameron Irvin just didn't have an answer for that. And allows Dallas to call their first timeout. So two timeouts to go with plenty of time if they get a hold here for Gregory, his first two sacks of the year. Brings up a third and 14. I wonder if we see Michael Parsons rushing the passer here. It doesn't look like it. He's still in the middle of that defense. There he is, number 11. Here is Darnold. Back to pass. Gets it out to Thomas. Long way to go. Not going to get there. And he goes out of bounds. Oh, I think they're saying he was in. I think they're saying he was in, so they will use a timeout. Ian Thomas was really dangerously close. If he goes out of bounds there, he stops the clock under two minutes. But I think they ruled him that he got tackled in. It was very interesting. Last week, Mike McCarthy came under fire a little bit there at the end of the first half against Philly. He decided not to try to extend the first half. He decided to just get the ball, kneel on it, and go in for the half. You see him here, a lot more aggressive, called timeout. Now the last two plays, he's going to give Dak the ball with plenty of time, one timeout remaining, try to put a little two-minute drive here before the half. Well, it's really interesting, right? I mean, he took, I mean, they won the game going away, but he took a lot of flack for that call, said he just uh, liked the way his defense was playing, maybe not as much in this game and remember Carolina gets the ball after the half too giving his team plenty of time to operate here on a fourth and five they'll punt it away lamb gonna call fair catch booming kick by Charlton way up there in the stratosphere as it'll be Dallas ball 140 to go we take this break a short break from Columbia let's hear from them this gold means you're a champion But this gold means you're a champion of warmth. Because Omni Heat Infinity uses thousands of gold dots to reflect more of your body heat. Our gold beats cold. Omni Heat Infinity from Columbia, the gold standard in warmth. We are back, 14-13, Carolina in front of Dallas, 140 to go in the half. Good news for Carolina, see number seven, Shaq Thompson is back. Hassan Reddick is back in the game, so two of their best defensive players are back in with the injury stuff they've dealt with. But a lot of time for Dallas, one timeout left, 140 to go in the half. You see some of those pressure looks we talked about earlier. So they come with a blitz. Prescott sees it, gets it to Cooper. Say Boye coming off the edge here. He's unblocked. Dak feels it, gets the ball out of his hand for a big chunk play. Great job there by Dak, sensing that pressure off the slot. You can see Carolina, they got guys walked up. All right, Shaq's getting them out of the pressure. You see him signaling, getting them into a more of a coverage look. Just a four-man rush instead. Prescott throws it way over the head of Elliott. Oh, Matt Rule caught it. Nice job, coach. Dropped the play sheet. Had to get that one up. So it's a lot of talking there before the snap. There was, and I think all that talking, they blew the coverage. I think Chin is supposed to carry the tight end. They end up with two. Look, Ooh. he's wide open. So they checked from a pressure look to more of a too high safety zone look. No one carried the vertical number three receiver in that case, Dalton Schultz. Carolina dodged a bullet there. Dak ended up going to the boundary. He said Coach Rule caught it. He actually got an assist, but we, you know, it's okay. We'll count it as a catch. Okay. Blitz coming. Prescott. Tipped and incomplete. It was tipped over the middle. 
I want to say it was Brian Burns who dropped from the pressure that time who got it bring him third and ten yeah, and Phil Snow he's going back to what they know best which is their pressure package you can see him he's bringing linebackers he's bringing guys off the edge from the secondary he's dropping defensive linemen you see Brian Burns there drop into coverage I think that's the formula that this defense wants to find there's Phil Snow right in the middle of your screen there's a third down and ten Dallas obviously on the field goal range see all these bodies up here Kevin some are going to pressure, some are going to drop. They're all going to come. Prescott gets hit as he throws. Incomplete, and the pressure works again as Phil Snow dials up another blitz. And now Carolina with all three timeouts here. Credit to Phil Snow. You see, all these bodies up front make it really hard. Franklin, again, comes unblocked. We've seen it now twice in that possession. The one time they got away with it, he got the ball out to Cooper early. That time, the pressure definitely affected his throw. And now here you are. You got three timeouts. Carolina's getting the ball just under a minute. Let's see how aggressive they are now trying to get a two-minute drive to try to go steal some points. So the Panthers D holds. Here's Erickson. And fair catch this one right around the 10. So, Panthers with all their timeouts. Sam Darnold, I know you talked to him for the pregame feature. Are you impressed with what you're seeing on the field? You, you can't watch this game and not come away extremely impressed, not only with the throw, not only with the accuracy, but really what's caught our eye today is when he's decided to run both by design and kind of improv, he's showing his athleticism. A lot of attention's on the other side of on the other sideline, Dak Prescott, but Sam Darnold, he's answering the bell today and playing playing really well. And now you said we'll see how aggressive they are, backed up. Just outside their own 10, 48 seconds to go, but all three timeouts. Yeah, typically you want to get one first down before you go to hurry up offense. You don't want to go incomplete, incomplete, incomplete. Arnold pressure coming in trouble. He sacked inside the five. He had a lot of time, but finally had to get rid of it. The third sack of the day. That time it's Terrell Basham who got home. And now timeout is called by Dallas. You would expect Carolina, you'd expect Carolina, better than throwing an incomplete there, take the sack, backed up on your own five-yard line, you probably expect them now. Dallas has no timeouts. Hand off, hand off. Let's go into the half with the lead. If they would have gotten a chunk play there and gotten a first down or gotten moved, you would have seen Carolina go into a little more of an up-tempo rhythm. Typically, first down sets the tone for two-minute drives, and of course, that was less than ideal. Yeah. The Panthers backed up have to be careful here. Dallas has no timeouts left. It's just not turn it over if you're Carolina. Freeman's in the backfield. We'll give it to him. Up the middle, dancing, gets out of the hole and out back near the 10 yard line. I'm assuming that will run out the half. Something to keep in mind when we come out of the break, Kevin. This Dallas defensive line now has really started to impose their will a little bit. They've gotten after Darnold a couple times. He's broken through on a scramble, but they're starting to get home now more often than not. Let's see what answers Carolina has up front in the second half. And Carolina will get the ball to start the second half, too. Keep that in mind as we take it to the end of the first. Good game here in Texas, where the undefeated Panthers have a one-point edge over the Cowboys. 14-13 to on the strength of two. Sam Darnold running touchdown. Kurt Terry, Howie, and Michael, the halftime show coming up. And then we'll see you for the third quarter in just a few.
aggressive as the Panthers up by one at the half. We get set to start this third quarter here, and Sam Darnold coming on out with the Panthers, 3-0 on the year. We welcome you to the booth. Greg Olson, Kevin Burkhardt. We talked at the beginning, Carolina 3-0, their defense is number one in the league, but a new test today. So how are they doing? I think they've held up pretty well so far. I think both defense at this point. I think they're both thinking in the halftime, we got to get our first takeaway, right? we got to change the scope of this game. But I think both defenses have to go into the first half feeling like they've held up pretty well. Yeah, both quarterbacks, too, playing a good game. And, and the legs coming into it. Darnold, five rushing touchdowns. And Dak on both their drives had long runs, too. Yeah, we, we know how good of an athlete Dak is. Maybe Darnold doesn't get enough credit, but both of them have impacted this game, both with their arm. But I'd, I'd argue their biggest plays have become extending drives with their legs. No question. And all the drives in the game are all long. It's been a 70-yard drive and then three 75-yard drives. So the offense is going down the length of the field and a good game as we get set in this third quarter. Carolina will receive it and they'll start on their own 25. Let's go down to the sidelines with Pam Oliver. I asked Mike McCarthy, first of all, about the offense, what he thought of the group. How do you get them kick-started into another gear? He said, first of all, we it's, this is going to be a pressure game, and we have to understand that. He said we can afford to protect Deb Prescott a little bit better. Defensively, where Sam Donald is concerned, he said we gave up those third and ones, and it really hurt us. He also used the word that Greg just used, turnovers. I'll have more on Matt Roll in a sec. Yeah, they haven't gotten them. That's what's led Dallas's defense this year. Matt Rule told us if we don't turn the ball over, we'll be in this game. It's exactly what's happened. They start with Hubbard with a run, and good time. And he's going to have a nine-yard game. We have a penalty flag, too. But, Pam, go ahead and finish your thought here. And, you know what, hang on. Let's just see. It looks like this is going to be coming back. But let's confirm. They're going to talk it over. Holding offense, number 65. 10-yard penalty. Replay, first down. Well, one thing about Matt Rule, he told me we knew that there was going to be a flurry to start this game. We just knew we had to withstand it. He believes they did. Sam Darnold, he is very, very pleased with his play. Let me tell you something about Matt Rule. He comes out very, very relaxed, laughing and joking with his players that they hit the field. Oh, they look at it. They're playing relaxed, especially after Dallas scored that opening touchdown. It's kind of like they answered and settled the game, Greg. You know, that's how it felt to me. So after the penalty, move it on back. First and 13. Darnold over the middle. Moore, good catch right in stride. First down, turns it upfield. D.J. Moore still going inside the 40. Oh, what a beauty to Moore in stride for 39 yards. They just beat the pressure, and he gets the ball out just in time. Watch Parsons with a little T.E. stunt. He's too late. Darnold does a great job hitting D.J. Moore in stride. It was man coverage. Trevon Diggs got kind of mixed up there in the middle of the field, running around one of the other offensive players of Carolina. But you can see just how explosive D.J. Moore is with the ball in his hands. He turns into a running back. Once he receives, once he catches the ball, 99 yards on the game for more. Here's Anderson on the jet sweep, looking to get to the edge. And Anderson going to pick up four yards for Trayvon Diggs, knocks him down. Yeah, something I thought was interesting that Pam said about Matt Rule coming out being a little more relaxed. The energy around the Panthers' practice facility, maybe compared to last year and year one and year two. So many guys I've talked to there say they can sense a more relaxed Matt Rule. He seems a lot more comfortable that his system is in place. Maybe last year he's really trying to make a statement, changing things from the past regime. They said he's a lot more comfortable, a lot more relaxed atmosphere. And I think that's a big reason why his team's playing so much better this year. Second and seven. Now a late blitz. Darnold sees it, flings it incomplete. He was looking for Terrace Marshall, but could not complete it on a third and seven now. Well, listen, on that point with Rule, I mean, listen, your Carolina career essentially ended when he came in, right? I mean, so that's where a lot of the veteran leaders like yourself not back. This is a young team. And he knew for his, for his ability to kind of put his stamp on this organization. He talked about how much respect he has for Ron Rivera and the success of the past regime. But he needed to get guys like me out of there and got some of the older, more established guys. He needed his guys to implement his system. And I can't say I blame him. It's obviously worked thus far. He's got six Temple players, three players from Baylor playing for him. Third and down blitz. Garno floats it incomplete. 
He got hit, and because of that, it was thrown behind DJ Moore. And J. Ron Curse came in hot on the blitz. Yeah, before the half, we said it seemed like this Dallas defensive line. And you see all these bodies up. They come, they twist, they stunt. You see Micah Parsons is coming. They're bringing the whole crew. They can really rush the passer. They're starting to get home. They're starting to knock Sam Darnold down. Right before half, we said, Kevin, let's keep an eye on that. It seems like they're starting to break through, and it came at a great time there on third down. Meanwhile, they're going to try a 54-yard field goal with Zane Gonzalez. His career long is 56. Puts it up, and it is hooking, and it is no good. And that will give the Cowboys really good field position. So Gonzalez can't connect from 54. And now it's Stack, and the Cowboys will take over down by one here in the third. Take over good field position after the missed field goal, long one by Gonzalez. And you see they had a couple long touchdown drives, but forced to punt on their last two. Elliott dancing through. Look at this, Elliott. Good run. Got 11 yards after being tripped up behind the line of scrimmage. Even through the first three weeks, and especially today, it seems like Zeke Elliott has kind of got his legs back. He looks faster. He looks more nimble. Shaq Thompson tries to run through. That little subtle shift, and then he's back up into the into the void in the defense. That's a great jump cut. He looks fast. He looks quick. These last couple weeks, I feel like he's really starting to get his legs under him. We go jumbo formation here. McGovern in as an extra line. The tight ends. Elliott again, patiently running back there. And the other thing is, he's also dominated the snaps. You know, you wonder with he and Pollard. Pollard had that big week too. It's been all Zeke for the most part today. Yeah, and don't think that all that, you know, those words, those stories that come out about Pollard needs more reps. Don't think Zeke doesn't re realize that. This is a prideful guy who's run for a lot of yards. Guys like him, they take that stuff personal. And he says, no, when I'm back there and he's running, you saw in that last one, not really blocked that well. You feel like you do a good job. Next thing you know, it's second and five. Elliot again, right side. Runs into Carter and still goes forward enough, I think, for a first down. I mean, he was stopped three yards before the marker by Carter, but he kept on going, turned the back, and he moves the chains. He can run with speed and quickness. We saw the jump cut on the first run. Now you can see he runs right through Jermaine Carter. See a lot of guys stripping at the ball. Zeke has his history of fumbling, but you got to get that big guy down on the ground first. And now Elliott comes out. Here comes Pollard in the game. Pollard four for 16 on the ground today. It's coming. It's picked up. Prescott going for it all for Cooper. He's got it. Touchdown. See if he's in here. One, two, yeah, he's clearly in. Great footwork. You see they got CJ Henderson. He's just signed this week out playing man to man against one of the elite, elite wide receivers. Great ball placement by Dak. They call that dropping it in the bucket. I mean, he couldn't walk out there and hand him that ball in a better spot. It's nice to see Amari Cooper early in the early in the game. He thought maybe he wasn't going to come back in. He did, and seems like that hamstring's just fine. Second touchdown pass of the day for Prescott. That was a beauty. 35 yards to Cooper, and the Cowboys jump in front on their opening possession of the third. Dak dropping a dime, and Dallas jumps back in the lead. Make it 20 to 14. Utah Snow. Cooper and boy was that a beauty 35 yards perfectly thrown gets in the end zone beat CJ Henderson and Amari at home has usually done pretty well if you look at his career with the Cowboys he's been for whatever reason much better production here at home remember it was the missed field goal got good field position and Prescott and the Cowboys deliver but there was a lot of nuance to that play too Greg 
It was. Should we talk? C.J. Henderson ends up in one-on-one -on -one coverage, but how it ended up that way is Amari Cooper motions across. That bumps C.J. Henderson from instead of just matching up in his zone against the tight end, he finds himself. The double move, the slight weave by Amari Cooper is what settles his feet, and now it just becomes a track meet down the sideline. It's not bad coverage. It's a great throw, a great catch. Like I said, I mean, that ball is dropped literally in the bucket of Amari Cooper. Great scheme design, great execution. Now how the Panthers answer with Hubbard. Again, Chuba Hubbard playing today. The injury to Christian McCaffrey in week three against Houston with a hamstring. Good news for McCaffrey is they didn't put him on IR, so they're hoping it's only a week or two injury. I know you spoke with him before the game. He's here. I did. I got to visit him, visit with him for a little bit. He's there one he of my good buddies. But, man, is he a competitor? Nobody takes more pride in being out there, taking care of his body. I know this is killing him. But the fact that they didn't put him on IR, I think, suggests that they feel like he's going to be back hopefully sooner than later, and when he does come back, he can stay back. Blitz coming, second down, Darnold slings, ooh, that was trouble. Marshall, the intended receiver, a lot of traffic, brings up third down, brings up another game break with Carissa. Thanks, Kevin. Falcons trailing, third and 13. Matt Ryan connects with Cordero Patterson for this 14-yard score. Cordero's third of the day, two-point conversion, no good. Falcons up 23, 19. Kevin? You know, it looks like a team has finally figured out how to use him on offense. He's having a big year. He has. We saw him a couple weeks ago. He looks very comfortable playing that hybrid running back, wide receiver type role. Michael Parsons here lined up right over the center. Matt Paradis. Third down. Parsons coming through. Darnold gets away, but not anymore. He goes down. Fourth sack for Dallas. Odigi Zua and Golston combined. You can sense this D-line here in Dallas is starting to feel it. Look at Micah Parsons. He's just going to take on the center. And then all the twist stunt. You said Odigizua, Golston. They got a lot of guys who can rush the passer. They're very multiple in their fronts. Give credit to Dan Quinn. He has done a really good job changing the culture of this Dallas defense that in the last couple of years has come, come under some fire. So after getting the touchdown, the D forces a three and out. Here's Wilson. Call fair catch and a high kick by Charlton, but Wilson up around the 34. There's Dan Quinn in the D. He's got the backward cap going. You know he's feeling good. This defense gets a big three and out, and they hand the keys back to Dak Prescott with the Cowboys in front by six in the third. It's getting a big stop there. Three and out after the Cowboys go the touchdown to Amari Cooper and their ball up by six and Sam Darnold going into the blue injury tent. That's obviously something to watch. Cowboys pressure turning it up. Up by six, nine ten to go in the third. And now let's see if this Panthers number one defense can hold the fort. Prescott to throw on uh, the fake has CD Lamb who's been quiet today and Lamb has his first catch of the day. So you talked about Dak Prescott's perfect throw last time. One of the beauties here is they hired a coach in Mike McCarthy who didn't touch the offense. Continuity that's the word that gets thrown around here in Dallas Mike McCarthy has a big history of play calling Super Bowl winner and as the head coach also play caller in Green Bay. He came in and said Kellen Moore Dak Prescott. We cannot disrupt that relationship. I believe in them. I trust them. Prescott here throws it to Lamb again. So after not catching a ball all game, he's got two in a row and a first down. He, he, he started talking to me. He said, when I was with, with Hackett back in Kansas City years ago, we implemented an offense, and then all of a sudden we trade for Joe Montana. He goes, Hackett did a great job. We didn't change our verbiage. We made sure that Montana was very comfortable with what we were going to do coming from his system in 49ers. He goes, I learned from those past experiences. This whole system is built around Dak. Our team is built around Dak. I was not going to come in and disrupt that. Now letting Kellen Moore do his thing. Three years offense coordinator was quarterback coach before that. Elliott, huge hole. Ezekiel Elliott off to the races. Can he get there? Chin knocks him out of bounds inside the 10.
We said earlier, he looks fast, he looks explosive. You see him bring Cooper down on the end for the extra blocker. He just does a great job being patient, finding that hole, and hits it. This was a, a scheme we used to see back when Le'Veon Bell was really at the top of his game in Pittsburgh. They call it the old Steeler zone fit. He ran it to perfection right there. Patience, and when the hole opens, hit it. 117 yards for Elliott, 47 on that carry. First and goal, Cowboys. On the fake, Prescott a little floater. They're going to walk into Schultz for the touchdown. So Franklin, he has Schultz man. When Schultz blocks out, he pulls and takes his eyes off his man. This is man coverage, but when Schultz goes out to block Brian Burns, Franklin puts his eyes on the quarterback. That's all it takes. We got, you got to have better eye discipline. You got Schultz. He's your man. Really well executed. Defenders just can't help themselves finding the ball. Really well executed. You see Dallas here trying to get back that early failed conversion by going for two. Yeah, to make it a 14-point game. Wilson in motion, fake to him. Prescott pressured, rolling, floating, nobody there. CeeDee Lamb was the closest, but that play didn't look good from the start. But this drive all got started with a 47-yard run from Ezekiel Elliott to set up another touchdown to the tight end. When Greg Olson calls your games, tight end score. That's just the theme. Into gear here in the third quarter with a couple touchdowns. They missed a two-point try. Remember Prescott with a 35-yard pass to Cooper. And then he hits Dalton Schultz. So three touchdowns for Dak today. And Ezekiel Elliott, back-to-back -back big weeks for him. 117 yards, a rushing touchdown. He has carried the load. Certainly helps that their offensive line is doing a great job with the great Tyron Smith at the end of it. So now the Panthers with their first real duress of the season. We told you Sam Darnold hadn't played behind all year. Well, now he's behind a couple scores. Greg, we've been talking about Dallas, how Micah Parsons would move around today like he's been doing. So how has he been doing it today? He's a guy that they can line up all over. You see him here playing a more traditional defensive end, just a straight speed rush. Doesn't necessarily get home. Now you see him off the ball, more of a traditional linebacker. Does a nice job filtering through traffic, nose on the ball. Now the last possession we saw, this was second down, shows the pressure over the center, drops in zone. Very next play on third down, he rushes the center, Matt Paradis, gets Darnold off his spot. He's a chess piece that Dan Quinn can move all over. And today's been a great example of the impact he can have lining up in multiple positions. Here's Darnold, who is in the game, throwing incomplete for more. As Diggs on the camera, we showed you Darnold walking into that blue 10. Looks like he's obviously okay, but now second and 10. One thing Carolina has to do, you talked about, they haven't played from behind very long. So, you know, had often much this year. But you don't want to feel there's a ton of time left, seven minutes in the third quarter. Two scores might seem like a lot. Just stay in your package. Stay on script. Stay in your game plan. There's no need to go away from what you've done, not only today, but through the first quarter of the season. Second down. Donald flushed out. Looking. Can't find anyone. That throws on the run. He's got a completion. Anderson, his old buddy from the Jets, who came back to get it. Now we'll see where they mark it. He's close. Maybe just a little short of a first down. I think about a half yard short. Another example of Darnold doing a great job keeping the play alive. But I really like what Robbie Anderson did. He was kind of dead up the sideline there. And he just came right back to the sticks. Watch Robbie Anderson here. So he's kind of dead. Kind of dead, sees his quarterback. He tries to go deep. Now watch how assertive he is coming forward. He presents a great target. Donald sees him, puts it on his chest, sets up third and short. Sneak and ooh, I don't think he got there. I don't think he got anything. Sam Darnold and this line did not get any push on third and one. They do not get it. 
now they're going to go for it in their own territory. Look at Odigizua in there. Yeah. Bolston does a nice job crossing face. I mean, they got six guys lined up over the center and the two guards. And now they will punt. Yeah, I like I like punting here. You're on your 34 and a half yard line. If for whatever reason you don't get it, punt the ball, regroup. I think this. I think this is the right move if they decide to stick with it. Well, hold on. They got a timeout, so I'm guessing if there's oh, a timeout, oh, they're, they're going to send the about offense it. back out there. So they changed their mind. Gives us a second to tell you about Saturday. Massive top five showdown. Big noon doubleheader on Fox. Big noon kickoff crew live from Iowa City at 10 Eastern. Maryland and number 11 Ohio State at noon. And at 4 Eastern, game of the weekend. Number four Penn State against number five Iowa. Wow. Huge big noon Saturday on Fox and the Fox Sports app. And so the Panthers are going to go for it here in their own territory on a fourth and one. He said, hey, why not? What do we have to lose? You know, when you think about it, I still don't know if it's the right move or not, but if you're in the mind of Matt Rule, you might feel like your defense is starting to break down a little bit. This is going to become a possession-based game. Can we match scores with Dallas? He doesn't believe Dallas is done scoring. A punt here, he feels like they go down, he falls behind three. This is the play of the game here. Fourth and one, they go speed sweep to Moore, who's going to get there. Great call. Great call. You can see they're lined up over the center again, expecting a quarterback sneak or something quick up the middle. Really good call. I'll tell you what, that takes that takes a lot of courage there on your own 34-yard line. Good job by Joe Brady there. He had that play dialed up. He said, no, no, coach. Come take a timeout and get that punt team out of here. I'm going to get this first down. Joe, Joe Brady, one of the great young coordinators in this game, just 32 years old. Second year in Carolina, led the LSU offense with Joe Burrow to a national title before that. So a big pickup on fourth. And now first down on the flip of the Chuba Hubbard, who breaks a couple tackles and a solid run by Hubbard, who's got seven yards on first down. So let me ask you, you played for a guy in Ron Rivera who went for it on fourth down all the time. This is a young team. That call alone. Does that resonate? What does that do? Just making, having the guts to make that call. Yeah, I think it says a lot. I think it says a little bit about how you feel about your defense, but I think it says a lot about how you feel about your offense and the confidence that you feel. Hey, if we're going to come in on the road and win big games like this, we might have to take some chances. We might have to go outside the box right there. That was a really, really gutsy call there by Matt Rule. It paid off. Keep this drive alive. These guys, they got a new sense of life. Here's Hubbard, who gets slammed in the backfield. It's the fourth time he's been tackled for a loss today. J-Ron Curse, who's really been all over the place on the play. I mean, look how many guys there are around the ball, Kevin. I mean, at some, I, I feel like at some point they got to start pushing the ball downfield, uh, kind of spread these guys out a little bit, get them off your back. The old line's kind of under siege. They're bringing pressures. They're bringing safeties off the edge. A lot of that has to do with, do they feel like you're going to push the ball downfield? You see it again here. Look how many guys are up at the ball. And look at all these guys. Now, some might bail, some might come. And no play. Whistle blows. And we get a timeout. Timeout, Carolina. The Carolina has used two timeouts on this drive. We'll talk it over on a third down, and now this from Geico. All right, here we go. Miller in motion. What, wait, is that a baby on the field? It looks like it, Craig. And the defensive linemen are playing peekaboo. I've never seen anything like that before. Harris now appears to be burping the baby. Uh, that's a great moment right there. Ref going to the rule book here. Well, wait a minute. Harris is off to the races. We don't need any more trick plays. Touchdown! But we could all use more ways to save. Are you kidding me? Well, that's going to be a long bus ride home for the defense. Switch to Geico for more ways to save. Third and five for Carolina, calling their second timeout on the drive. They converted the fourth and one of their own territory, now a big third. The interesting, has Matt Roll told Joe Brady this is four down territory if you can get us close enough? Is this third and five, but two chances to get it if they find themselves in a fourth and short?
Arnold pressure, steps in, throws, intercepted! Diggs has another one! Trayvon Diggs looking for blocking inside the 40. His fourth of the year, he's had one in every game. You see Diggs, you see Diggs right here. They show pressure, everyone drops. And Sam Darnold just, he doesn't see him. He feels like he has Robbie Anderson there, and it's its really the first big mistake we've seen from Sam Darnold. He steps up, he just doesn't see it. It's just funny. Trayvon Diggs just always finds a way to end up with the ball in his hands. Ultimate playmaker, his stats are just, the start of his career is just incredible. And now the Cowboys with great field position. They're gonna give it a side of the power, sprinting through the line. It's a first down inside the 25, and you could feel all the momentum shifting towards Dallas. I mean, Diggs is incredible. He's got seven interceptions his last nine games now. Think about that. Four straight game this year, which ties a team record. Everson Walls has that. Seven interceptions in the last nine games? Some guys just have a knack for being around the ball. Ball skills. Was a former receiver. Defensive back. There's Pollard. And now if the Panthers ever needed to make a stand on defense, here it is. Even though we're only in the third quarter, you just feel this wave of momentum. So you see Diggs here. He's just going to fall back in his zone. He's reading the eyes. And he's just going to jump and rob that route. He's a safety playing what they call a robber. He's kind of the down hook curl player, which is that area of the field about over the tackle box, about 10, 12 yards. He's sitting there and just robs it from coming from the other side with Robbie Anderson. Second and 10, blitz coming, Prescott. See Cedric Wilson right here, number one. He goes out like he's gonna stalk for the flat route, and nobody carries him. Great play design. You can sense Dallas has just taken full control of this game. The crowd is loving it. Kind of running away with it here. Dak Prescott has three touchdown passes in the quarter. Four for the game. 23 yards to Cedric Wilson. But of course, it was the turnovers that got this team going, just like last week. Trayvon digs the pick, and then a dart to Wilson, and a little a spin to the end zone. 23 unanswered for Dallas. Defense coming into today has gotten obliterated in the third quarter, and obviously the turnover set that up. But you see 23 unanswered points for Dallas. See the run game. They had allowed nothing on the ground, but getting torn up today on the ground among other things Dak Prescott tying a career high four touchdown passes three of them in the quarter it's Dallas offense they could just explode on you like that and all of a sudden they run out to a 33 14 lead still a lot of time to go in this 217 to go in the third so what Dallas is selling here is Dalton Schultz to the flat and then we got block block but what they're gonna do is after they sell the block we're gonna get route route Dak's gonna pump it and you see Cedric Wilson, once the two defenders jump the flat, he's wide open up the seam, spin move to avoid the free safety. Kellen Moore is in a great play calling rhythm right now. We talked about how hard it is to stop this Dallas offense. They're firing on all cylinders right now. They're a handful. They'll stay on the ground and try and get back in this game across the 32 Hubbard. Game break time. Let's check in with Kurt Menefee. All right, Kevin, keeping it on the ground is Taysom Hill. Second time he's done this today, running it in for a touchdown. And the Saints begin to separate from the winless Giants right now. They're up 21 to 10 early in the fourth quarter. Appreciate that, Kurt. Dallas by 19 here. And I know you said a little while ago you got to stay with the game plan. Can you still do it? 
Everything is getting hard now. You find yourself down three scores. You feel the momentum slipping away. They, they, need, they need one of their marquee players right now to make a play. Try to recapture some of this game. Darnold, big drop, fires, knocked away. Anthony Brown, step for step with Robbie Anderson. He says, no, no, no. And it brings up third down. It's a great job by Anthony Brown. You see there's a little space, what they call it, he's gonna undercut the route. But what he does a great job is he uses his inside arm. So in the event he misses it, you can see his right arm secure the tackle. Inside arm, watch him undercut this. Watch his left hand. Even if he misses, the right arm allows him to secure the tackle. That's really, really well played by Anthony Brown. Third and three, blitz coming. Darn oh! It's a feeding frenzy here in Big D. So see how flat-footed he is, and he, the second he feels DJ Moore put the brakes on, he's just driving. He understands the down, he understands the distance, field possession. You can't discount when a team starts feeling like they're getting to the quarterback and the ball has to come out early, the rush and the secondary go hand in hand. If I'm a defensive back, I'm Diggs. He doesn't have all day to hold it. I can afford to just sit and drive, and that's a perfect example of what happens. Pollard in the game. Look where the Cowboys start this possession. On the 29, and we get a whistle. All-star offense, number 87. Five-yard penalty, still first down. But the identity of this Cowboys team this year, well, there's, there's been a few of them, right? But, I mean, this defense, which, look, they were historically bad last year. So anything would have been an improvement. Well, this is the thing. They started building some momentum late, and this year they've taken it to another level. A straight game with two-plus takeaways. Diggs has two interceptions today. He's got five on the year. It's week four. Pollard to the end. Gets tripped up from behind by Jeremy Chin. Otherwise, that would have been a home run ball. Feels like an avalanche now. It is. I mean, just well executed. You see big Connor Williams out in front. Jeremy Chin saves what would have been a touchdown coming from his safety spot. They can just continue to come after you from so many directions. Tries to get outside, but Chandler is there. It'll be a third down and one. That may take us to the end of this quarter. What a quarter it's been for the Cowboys. Two interceptions, 20 points, three touchdown passes from Dak Prescott. Five interceptions in four weeks, is that good? I think or? that's good. Okay. I just looked it up. I think, I think that's good. I feel good about it. But even that one, you just see the old receiver ball skills. He didn't catch it clean. There was some bobbling. There was some fight in him and DJ Moore were kind of wrestling. Looks like they're going hurry up here again. They will get a playoff. They will hand it off to Elliott. Just needed a yard. I think he got it. It's close. Let's see where the spot is. Know this, that's the end of the third where Dallas took over this game. Now have a 33-14 lead after three. Mind. That was an unbelievable third quarter. Two interceptions by Trayvon Diggs, 20 points to none, and all of a sudden it's a 19-point game. Look at the third quarter. I mean, Greg, this was a Carolina one-point lead at the half. What, ha what happened? It just feels like a big uppercut. Yeah, it just ran into a little bit of a buzzsaw collectively. You know, the defense 
of Dallas making turnovers and getting the ball back and their offense really being able to do whatever they want both on the ground. Fourth down here, they're going to go for it. Or at least give you the appearance they're going to go for it. There's a challenge flag on the other side of the field. Uh, is Mike McCarthy going to challenge a spot from the last Elliott run? Dallas is challenging the rule of the field as the run was down short of the Lions today. Okay. Well, I guess you got nothing to lose at this point. Doesn't think he'll need that timeout regardless. I mean, it was close. Didn't go back and look at it to be completely honest in the break. And now everyone's looking at it. On the, they're all looking up at the big screen. I mean, how do you miss it? It's pretty easy to look up. Problem is nobody can see the big screen because you're standing directly under it. They're under it. Here we go. Why don't we just show you from our own replays? All right, so. From there, I don't know that he got it. And again, the yellow line is unofficial, but we do a pretty darn good job with it. So balls in Zeke's right hand, Kev. So even though it looks like his left shoulder pad might be, you could argue, is over the line, is his right arm where the ball is, it's very close. It's really close. He always carries it in that right arm, always. even when he's going to the other sideline. So always. in a case like that, I mean, just from those replays, I don't know that yeah. that's going to be overturned. After reviewing the play, the rule of the stands, the ball carry was short of the line of the game. Dallas is charged his first time out and challenge of the half. You know what? She's having a good time no matter what. So there you go. And now because of that, they're going to kick the field goal. So I guess if you're the Cowboys, the way things have been going, you figure you got nothing to lose. Give it a shot on that replay. And they'll send out Greg Zerline here. It's be a 37 yarder for Zerline. Make it a 22 point game. And he's perfect. You know, we came on talking about Dak Prescott and this offense. He, he, I feel like, you know, with everything that happened last year, you know, you, everyone questioned how would he come back? Hopefully he's healthy. I feel like he's jumped up another level, and I know he was playing great before he got hurt, but this is sick right now. Which is almost hard to believe. Yeah. You know, prior to his injury last year, he was on record pace playing the quarterback position. Now, granted, he found himself last year chasing, playing from behind. The defense was really struggling. This team, though, this has the making to make a run to not only win the division, of course, but to make it deep into the NFC Championship and compete for the conference. Yeah. They're balanced. They're getting takeaways on defense. They're significantly improved. And I don't know what the plan is to stop this offense. We've talked about it a lot. They're so multiple. They're so versatile. It's a handful. You know, and I, I think your point about Elliott is so true, right? Everyone's like, wow, it's not the Zeke of old. It's not the 2016 Zeke. You know what? He looks like the 2016 Zeke to me today. He looks fast. He looks energized. You bring in Pollard. I mean, the second you see Zeke Elliott run out, you take a deep breath, and all of a sudden Pollard runs in, and you're like, oh, my God, i got to chase this guy around now. It's a lot to take in. That's why the Cowboys up big in this one. This week, Thursday Night Football on Fox. Matthew Stafford and the Rams against Russell Wilson and the Seahawks. Boy, is that a good one. Thursday, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on Fox. NFL Network and streaming on Prime Video. Are the Rams the best team in the NFC? Or are the Cowboys the best team in the NFC? I think right now, you got to say maybe the Rams. I think they might be a little bit better on defense. Now, granted, it's hard to say after today with the turnovers and how well Dallas has played. But I think the two of them are, are at the top. You know, usual suspects with Tampa. They're always going to be in the run. NFC is pretty loaded this year. Of course, everyone's saying, what, what happened to Brady? We get it. Brady and the Bucks are the defending champs. I'm not leaving them out. They'll still be there at the end. Just talking. Here's Darnold. is sacked by Parsons. Number five for Dallas. Yeah, Rodney Smith here. He has Parsons, and he does a nice job picking him up, but he tries to cut him. If you're going to try to cut him, the ball's got to come out. 
the second the ball doesn't come out, an athlete like Parsons is going to get back to his feet, continue to play. So that's either got to be quick game and cut, or if that's a drop back and hold it, the running back there has to stay on his feet and stay between Micah Parsons and Sam Donald. Cowboys had four sacks on the year, five sacks today. Donald over the middle, got a completion there, and that is Smith who gets out across the 30. This Cowboys defense is really flying around this year. They bring in Dan Quinn as their new defensive coordinator. And look, they are no doubt predicated on turnovers, on their young players. This is coming into the game. Odigizua has a half sack today. Parsons just got another one. But yeah, eight takeaways. Add on two more today. And this is all coming into today. But you see the identity here. And it, it, it's funny. We showed you Parsons and his impact. They're so young. Odigi Zua has been awesome, but he, you know, he gets overshadowed by Parsons. You see all the numbers today, the pressures, the turnovers. It goes hand in hand. Third down. Blitz again. They get it out to Marshall, and he is tackled short of a first. Jordan Lewis with a short-handed tackle. If he's short, there's no, it's a no-brainer. You got to go for it. You got no choice. Yeah, you got no choice here. You got to keep this alive. Down by 22. And look, there still is a lot of time left, but you got to get something on the board here. Three score game. Fourth and one. It's going to hand it off, and that's all they needed. It was Freeman who got the carry, and they'll keep the drive going. So they pick it up. We talked about the formula for Dallas, the young guys contributing, Parsons, Odigizua. But I thought it was interesting, you know, you called me this week, and I said, what would you see on film? I said, I saw Dan Quinn, and this is not the defense he used to run. It's not. You know, everyone thinks of Dan Quinn from his days with the Legion of Boom and the single high and very basic coverages in Seattle. He brought a lot of that scheme with him to Atlanta. When I first put on the, the tape this week, I thought I'd see a lot of that carryover. And prior to talking to him, I said, this is not the Dan Quinn defense we've seen over the last 10 years or so in the NFL. They clock winding down. I don't think they got the playoff. Before the play clock expires, timeout Carolina, the so, first of this half. So Carolina calls a timeout before the clock expired. But, but more on Quinn. So a, a lot, he brought over some of the stuff, but you saw a lot of different things, multiple. He said last year when he was let go down in Atlanta, he found himself, unfortunately, with a lot of free time. And a credit to him, a guy who's had a ton of success as a defensive play caller in this league, to be able to go back and reflect and say, what, is what I'm doing working anymore? Is what I'm doing a good fit regardless of my personnel? And give him credit. He's a lot more multiple in his fronts. He's a lot more multiple in his blitz packages, his coverages. And you've got to give a credit to a coach when he can recognize and look in the mirror and say, hey, I need to evolve as the NFL evolves. Evolves. Just because it worked for me in the past doesn't mean it's going to work for me now. And he has completely changed the feel and the look and the culture of this Dallas defense. He said, I don't recommend getting fired and going to Hawaii and doing all of this, but you know what? He used the time wisely. Credit our Laura Oakman for a lot of help on the mental side. So Dan's done a wonderful job. On first down, here's Darnold over the middle. Oh, my goodness, what a hit, and we get a flag. DeMonte Casey on the big hit on Tremble, and they throw the penalty flag. Hopefully Tremble's okay. Wow, I saw that one coming. KZ had him lined up, coming from depth. He hits him in the shoulder. Unless it's their rookie. Contact on the defenseless player. Defense number 18. 15 yards. You know, that, that sure looks like a legal hit and shoulder to shoulder, right? It was shoulder to shoulder. I think the only thing they could probably say, we should ask Dean, does KZ kind of launch himself? You see him, he kind of comes off the ground in live action. Anytime a player launches himself, you see the head snap back. But yeah, in, in, re, on replay, it looked like he went shoulder to shoulder. Now, 
I will say, I get it in real time as an official. It's yeah. so impossible to tell the difference, right? The guy launches. Here's Hubbard off the screen. Hubbard has a first down inside the 40 of Dallas. Dean, what's your take there? And I, I just said, I don't know if you heard, but I know it's impossible real time sometimes to see this as your official on the field, but what's your take on what they saw there? Yeah, I think you're right. In real time, it is hard. It's a big hit. You see some contact up in that head neck area. Ultimately, to me, it's, it's not a foul. He doesn't get him in the head neck. The launch would be a foul if there was contact with the helmet, but there's no contact shoulder to shoulder. To me, it's a legal hit. Okay, Greg, so you were on it. Dean, appreciate the clarification. What it I is. I wonder if at some point, I'm sorry, Kevin, you almost wonder at some point, will they make those reviewable? You know, those are huge plays in the impact of the game. It's Donald over the middle. Smith's got it diving down. And it'll be a second down for Smith. Yeah, I mean, you, look, you can see both. I mean, it's, if you're a defensive player, you're like, man, I did everything right. Perfect tackle. But again, if you're on the field, you can't. Like, how fast that is. It, it just would. It looks bad, right? It looks really violent. The head snaps back. You just assume there's contact to the head or neck area. In that case, there wasn't. Meanwhile, Carolina's trying to stay in this game here. They need three scores at least. Get over the middle, just kind of taking their yards. Smith again's got a first down with ten and a half to play. He's going to go a little hurry up here, try to find some tempo, find some, some rhythm. You can sense Darnold feels that pressure. He's really fast getting the ball down to his check down. That last one to Rodney Smith, the running back, number 20. First down, Darnold, three-man rush. Coming near side, Anderson makes a catch, makes a cut, and he's going to be stopped there by Brown. But it's going to be another first down. He's inside the 15, and now Anderson is slow to get up. I, oh, there he goes. Greg, just of note, Trayvon Diggs hasn't been on the field this whole drive. Uh, Maurice Kennedy has been playing for him, number 31. Don't know if there's anything to it, but there he is, Kennedy, on the top side. First and ten, Carolina. Trying to punch it in, get a little closer. They throw it far side, Zilster catches with a stiff arm against Kennedy, and he's out of bounds inside the 10 got to get him down near the seven yeah I didn't see Diggs on that last possession come up lame he seemed like after the second pick he was feeling pretty good you see him there you got to imagine something's wrong for him not to be out there but he seems like he's pretty happy Al Harris the defensive backs coach he knows a thing or two about picking off passes right did one that won a playoff game back in the day. Second and two for the Panthers. Here's Darnold. Pressure up the middle again. Darnold racing away, firing, and it's caught for the touchdown to Moore. And the Panthers kind of methodically rush up the field and try to stay in this game, and D.J. Moore's got the score. Really nice job there by Sam Darnold buying time. You see a Diggy Zua, he gets pressure, he goes again inside of Cam Irving. Darnold feels it, flushes out wide. DJ Moore does a nice job breaking off his route, being friendly on the scramble drill, coming back. He's still alive. There's some fight in these Panthers, right? And I think if you're Matt Rule, there's no moral victories in the NFL. I don't know how this game's going to end up, but to see the fight from his young squad who's against the ropes on the road, it's a good sign. Sure is. Extra point. So they're going to need one two-point conversion at some point. They don't take it there, but still in the game. Down 15. A lot of time to go. When the King of the Ring and the inaugural Queen's Crown Tournament kick off the season premiere of Friday Night Smackdown. Live at 8 Eastern on Fox. Well, at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, some cancer screenings declined by 90%. Now doctors are diagnosing later stage cancers, which could have been detected sooner. So don't wait. Remind the loved one and talk to your doctor about getting screened. It takes all of us to intercept cancer. Visit NFL.com slash crucial catch to learn more. Back here in Arlington, 36-21. Cowboys by 15 after a dominating third quarter, but the Panthers just put one on the board, so they're still in this game. 
So now you look at Dak Prescott and the mojo of Mike McCarthy, the machine that Dak goes to, you know, tapping into the history of this great franchise. He's like, hmm, where do I go here? Try to get this team back to the Super Bowl. They'll go to Jimmy Johnson's great teams in the 90s, you know, Troy and the triplets. You never can go wrong with that. That worked pretty well last time I checked. Where do I go back even further than Todd Landry and Roger Staubach? Maybe I use a little of both to get us back. So far, the mojo today. Four touchdowns for Dak Prescott. Now he's trying to ice this game. The start by running a huge hole for Elliott, who picks up a quick 10 yards and a first down for the Cowboys. Another game break. Let's go back to Carissa Thompson. Thank you, Kevin. Giants trailing 21-10. Daniel Jones finds Saquon Barkley down the sideline for this 54-yard score. Two-point conversion good. They're down by three. They do have the ball again at the two-minute warning. Kevin? Giants looking for their first win. That'll be a big one for them. Appreciate that, Carissa. Ezekiel Elliott, 127 yards and a touchdown today. 47 yard run in that mix as well. Give it to him again, right up the middle. He's had a soft landing spot up the middle a lot today. It's been a good room to run behind this Dallas offensive line. Yeah, you got to give credit. Connor Williams, Tyler Biedaj, I mean, Zach Martin, they're really, really moving the interior defensive lineman here for Carolina. They've found something. And they're going to continue to go after it as they try to close this gap, this game here in the fourth quarter. Elliott still working across the 40. Bring him third down and sure. You saw that graphic, 212 yards rushing against a Panthers team that had allowed 45 yards per game. Yeah, sometimes, you know, early in the season, stats can be a little misleading, right? It depends on who you play, when you play them, what the other team emphasizes each week. And we knew coming in, this was not your typical running game that you're trying to stop, and Dallas has pretty much been able to do whatever they want, especially in the run game. That being said, they're only two of seven on third down. If there's an area to find that they haven't been great. Third down here, Prescott airing out, going for Lamb, and just overthrew him. Lamb was fighting there with Dante Jackson. And it'll bring up a fourth down. Got an injury update. Let's go down to Pam. Hey, Kevin. Yeah, the word on Trayvon Diggs is that it's player management. It's basically giving the guy some rest. Back to you. Pam, I like, you know, can I use that in like an everyday setting, like to my wife? You know, I, I need some announcer management. Absolutely. I need some sideline reporter management. Boy, my feet are killing me. There you go. You gotta get Pam one of these mats we have up here in the booth. They do wonders. I do, they, you can't really transport them with her. We get a flag before this punt. Well, good to know that Diggs is fine. All star offense number 25. Five yard penalty. Remains fourth down. Our real management, Greg, which is producer Pete Macheska and director Artie Kemper, says we got to go to break. In other words, shut up, announcers. Go ahead. After the point, you can take us to break. We'll listen. Nobody knows where the ball is. Do need that to punt it. And so they will on a fourth and eight. Ryan Anger gets into it. Good kick. Erickson lets it go over his head. And the Panthers will start on their 20. Dallas defense is flexing today. Five sacks, couple of turnovers. Their lead by 15. Cowboys have been in control the second half, and you heard Pam say player management. But, Greg, this is a two-score game. There's still a lot of time left in this game, and Diggs is not on the field right now. Are you surprised? I am a little bit. I mean, I understand they were up 22, maybe give them a blow on the last drive. Sam Darnold leads, leads the Panthers down there. They score. Their defense forces a punt. They get the ball right back. All right. This guy's falling asleep. He's going to wake up. This game's not over. By the way, announcer management, my wife Rachel said, you get it when you play golf anytime you want. Fair. I can't play that card. <laughs> That's fair. Thanks for the idea, Pam. Glad she's watching. It is. 
First and ten. Here we go for the Panthers. Down by two scores. And it's Darnold. Four man rush Parsons coming. Gets rid of it. And he's been getting it to Smith quite rightly the last couple of times here. And Smith going to pick up five. And here come the Panthers. They got to hurry it up, even though still time. But they only have, well, they've used all their timeouts. I certainly would like to have Christian McCaffrey back out there. Sideline, it's Thomas. Thomas up there has a first down. It's almost lulling Dallas to sleep at this point, but the game is not over. They are, but they're playing a lot of soft coverages. Sam Darnold understands there's a time in it, there's a clock in his head. He's got to get the ball out on time. He's seen a lot of underneath routes, the running backs. There you saw the tight ends. Now, at some point, does he take a shot downfield and test this coverage? But Dallas, you see these two high safeties back here. As long as they play deep like that, the underneath coverage is where they have some opportunities. And that blitzing, going far side, and that was almost another interception. Brown had it too. It's another example. We talked earlier about Diggs. You see Brown here. He's just flat-footed at the top. They got to run by him. Make these guys, if you want to sit at the sticks and you want to drive, I'm going to throw it over your head. I wouldn't be surprised at some point here they say, forget it, we're going to take a shot one on one up the sideline if you want to keep squatting on our routes. He's lucky that wasn't a pick. Brown knew it. So instead, second and 10. 544 to go. Again, Panthers out of timeouts. Down by 15. This time Blitz is coming. Darnold senses, rolls out. Can't find anyone. Just gonna run and take what he can get. I think you do. I think you try to. If you're, if you're Joe Brady now, you got a sense. Where are the mismatches? Where's, where are they playing maybe some backup players? And you said it. He's one of them. Play clock winding down. It's at zero. They don't get it off. And they had no timeouts. They couldn't stop it. The layup game. Offense. I y'all put it. Still third down. That's a huge mistake for Sam Darnold. This point in the game, you just can't have that. You can't have that. Your urgency should be at the highest level right now. Getting in and out of the huddle, get the play in. Exactly five minutes ago. See Kennedy down here. He's lined up on DJ. He's lined up on DJ Moore. Does he see that matchup and try to go to him? He's looking the other way. Darnold going to float on the other one. Has Anderson wide open and he overthrew him. There was your shot. Darnold just missed it. And now a fourth down and you got to go. Got to go for it here. I thought, you know, again, just finding your mismatches. Now he went to the top of the screen. Robbie Anderson with a little double move. He's got him. The touchdown. A touchdown. Yeah, you see, Sam. He knows. He knows a few have gotten away from him. You can see Robbie Anderson obviously frustrated, but they got to regroup now. They got to get into fourth down. See DJ Moore again lined up at the bottom of the screen. When the game's on the line, you go to your best players. Today, this is, that's been DJ Moore. Really, the game blitz is coming. Darnold delivers. Caught for a first down and then some. Zilstra making a move. Look at this. There's nobody home. Down to the 20 and inside the 15. On fourth and eight, Brandon Zilstra delivers. 55 yards and the Panthers in business. Just like we thought. Just like we said. At this <laughs> moment in the game, you don't go to Robbie Anderson. You don't go to DJ Moore. You go to Brandon Zilstra. That's exactly what we said. But they call this a seven stop. He kind of sells a corner out, pulls the string back, on, pulls the brakes. I'll tell you, Zilstra can run now. Don't sleep on him. He can run. I think Diggs needs to get out of his player management, if that's really what it is, and come back on the field. It's got to be something else. It has to be. There's no way they're giving him a rest. Panthers, plenty of time. First down here. Darnold. Back. Flag flies. Going end zone. Out of the end zone. But there's a flag that flew around the 10. And so we'll see what this is. Illegal use of hands, hands to the face. Defense, number 25. 
Five yard penalty. Automatic first down. It's Nashawn Wright, who's like their sixth quarterback. Yeah, you see Robbie Anderson on the release. Wright just stabs him with his outside arm, just catches his face mask pretty, pretty easy there for the official to see. Well, a couple things. Obviously, the Panthers have to get in, and if they do, they're going to decide if they want to go for two now or later. First and goal, we know that. DJ Moore, again, we saw it earlier. He's lined up at running back. Darnold looks his way, goes his way, touchdown, Carolina, two more. Hey. We showed you earlier in the broadcast, Kevin, they put him there. He ran a little option. He ran an outbreaking route. Now they came in here. They call that H option. That would be a Christian McCaffrey staple. But now they got him. He's going to come. He's going to square him up. He's going to cross face again. A lot of traffic. The defenders are running into each other. Tommy Tremble sets it with that burst release. That's a read. DJ can break out. We saw him do it earlier. He can break in. Just saw it on that last play, and we got ourselves a ball game now. Gonzalez for a huge extra point to make it a one-score game. It's up and good. 36-28, 4.31 to go. Carolina can't stop the clock, though, so they've got to get a stop on defense. Is there a thing is getting up too big too early? Because it just feels like Dallas kind of went to sleep. They were up 22. It felt like the game was over. They did. I think they got a little complacent. I think they thought the Panthers were just going to lay down. They didn't. They were down 22, went down, scored a touchdown. Defense went out, forced a punt. They kind of just handed the ball off, run, 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 eventually punted. They got themselves behind the aggressive nature they had throughout the most of the first three quarters. And they gotta put they gotta put the Panthers to better. They're gonna keep fighting back. Try and finish the game. Eight point game. So Carolina would need a touchdown or two, but they need a stop first for this Dallas offense, which has rolled up 394 yards. But their last position you talked about, they ran a few times. They only took two minutes off the clock. And keep in mind, fourth and eight. Darnold to Zilstra, 55 yards, just as you predicted. That's the connection. That's the connection we talked about coming in here today. Did Dallas have an answer for him? Big plays at the biggest time. And so a 22-point lead is now eight, and now a short kick to Pollard, who makes a man miss, and Dallas got back maybe to the 20. 426 left, no timeouts for Carolina. Dak Prescott, fourth, but now can this Cowboys offense finish this game? They were down 22. They've won three times down 17. They need a lot more to get there, but they're at least in it. Jumbo formation, Pollard in the game to give it to him. Big hole, Pollard makes the cut. Pollard spinning across the 35. That's a good start. For Tony Pollard, good blocking up front and a first down. Really nice job. Watch the right guard here, Zach Martin. He's going to pull around a gap scheme, gets just enough on the edge defender, and Pollard is super explosive. He hits that. They needed that. We talked about it. Are they willing to just sit on the ball and milk the clock? Well, they ran it, but it turned into a chunk play. Probably see him run it again here. 232 yards rushing for the Cowboys. It's Elliott cutting back against the green. And a big chunk here. Still pushing the pile. He's got eight. Huge chunks from the Cowboys run game as they try to run this game out. You know, something that seemed at the moment kind of a hidden part of the game in that one possession earlier in the, in the second half, Carolina ended up using those two timeouts. You know, on the fourth down that they lined up the punt and then they ended up going. They've got to save those timeouts. This is critical. And now here, if you're Dallas, milk this thing down. Don't snap the ball at 10, 10 seconds. Snap the ball at 2 seconds, 3 seconds. Every second here matters when you're trying to end this game. And you set them selling out here. And now penalties, multiple. Too many men. 12 men in position. Defense. Five-yard penalty resulting in a first down. Well, you saw Morgan Fox. There was all kinds of confusion with Matt Rule trying to shove him back on the field. So that critical error. You see Rule sending him out. Nobody 
but nobody came off. It's a critical error there at this point in the game, but this is it. They, they got to stop him here. One more first down. This is going to be tough. Haven't shown the ability to do it with this big formation. In. They're just going to keep on running it to Elliott. Gets a yard. Yeah, without any timeouts, this is really what it comes down to. Dallas gets another first down. Essentially, it's going to be over. Would you just stay on the ground here the way they've been getting? I mean, they've got 241 yards rushing today. Yeah, I think on this down, you're approaching the two-minute warning. You know that's the only opportunity Carolina has to stop the clock. On the fake, Prescott wide open. It's Schultz who corrals it, but that cost him. He would have had a first down and for all intents and purposes wrapped up the game. And now it's going to come down to a third down play. They sold out against the run in a really well-timed call there by Kellen Moore. Like you said, a better throw, a cleaner catch, and the game is over. We're going to take the two-minute warning here. It all comes down to this down. Well, Zeke's been running all day. One more first down. Dallas will win it. See if they can get it. We come back. Two-minute warning. In 2016, I was working at the Amazon warehouse. Can convert this third down, they'll win it. Third down and one from the 41. Elliott, a little option. He's got it. Game over. You talk about dialing up a call for a certain situation. Kellen Moore pulls a great, great play out of his bag what looked like kind of a little sweep to zeke elliott turned into a triple option so you see him hand it off brian burns is unblocked looks like he's going to make the tackle zeke makes nice little option what a big time play call there that was impressive that was really really impressive good play callers have plays they wait for the right time they carry him each week for the certain situation. And there you just saw one perfectly executed. Out and they win it 36 to 28. And the Cowboys and Carolina, their first loss. They're going to improve to three and one on a four touchdown day from Dak Prescott, 143 yard rushing day from Ezekiel Elliott, and a two interception day from Trayvon Diggs. The old Tom Landry. Victory formation. There you go. That'll do it. Fun one here in Arlington today. The third quarter for Dallas. Went up to a 22 point lead. Carolina got close. But the Cowboys run it out to victory and they win it by eight. So for our entire NFL on Fox crew, Pam Oliver, Greg Olson, I'm Kevin Burkhardt. Thanks for watching the Cowboys and the Panthers now both three and one. The Dallas, the week. We want to welcome those who have been watching Dallas, Carolina. We also want to welcome in, welcome in rules guru.